Chen, I want to welcome everybody to the Planning Commission meeting. And uh, we'll make, if everybody would do us a favor, make sure your cell phones are on vibrate. <laughs> that would be very helpful. But I want to call to order the Metropolitan Planning Commission meeting of December 13th, 2018. Again, welcome everybody for being here. We have a full agenda, so we'll get right. I do also want to say happy holidays to everybody. I hope that everyone spends lots of time with their family and friends. So we are on to item B, which is adoption of the agenda. Commissioners, have you all looked at the agenda? It was mailed to you. Any corrections, additions? We'll need a motion to approve. it has been a motion to approve and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and this agenda is adopted. Item C, we are on to the approval of the November 8th, 2018 mi uh, minutes, and those were also sent to all the commissioners, and you all have had a chance to review those. Um, is there any edits, additions? We'll need a motion to approve. There's been a motion to approve and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, ayes have it. And those minutes are adopted. And now we're on to item D, which is the recognition of the council members. And I did this as I saw y'all come in. So I saw Councilman Scott Davis first. Is he still here, Councilman? Oh, there he is. You wanna, you wanna Counts, Councilman Glover to go? Come on, Councilman. They're doing baseball signals. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Well, first of all, uh, Merry Christmas, and I uh, hope everybody has a great holiday season. I appreciate the, the work you do. Uh, so I have three items, of which one is supposed to be deferred uh, today uh, on Earhart Road. Um, we have not done meetings on that. We're trying to get it scheduled. Obviously, the holiday season's a little, little hectic. Uh, I have North New Hope Road. Uh, we have done multiple meetings on that. Uh, we did after the last time we were here. Uh, this, you know, this particular project's been deferred a number of times. We have had uh, a community meeting, which I attended. I would love to tell you that we can make everybody happy, but we simply can't. Uh, we have a very uh, strange issue in my district that some don't quite have in all the districts, and that is we butt up right next to Wilson County, and there's just a lot of traffic. And at the end of the day, I wish we could fix it all right now. However, I will tell you we have spent uh, almost two years, and when I say we, I should say the developer has spent almost two years on this project. Uh, when they first came to me, I said, absolutely not. Uh, there was no way I could, uh, could support it because of everything they were looking for. Uh, as everything has been worked through, they worked diligently with the staff here, uh, with your staff and, and, and chair and the director. I mean, they, they spent countless hours uh, working with the staff and coming up with a plan that I believe is one that, that, that I don't have a problem supporting. I, I think it's a good plan. Uh, again, I really wish we could do away with traffic in Nashville, but until we get some issues dealt with on our state roads and some other places, that's almost an impossibility. Uh, and so, and then finally, the project, and I believe this is on consent, if I may, um, Mr. Chair. Which the, one is it? It's the, uh, the, the gas station at Kroger's, um, and I'm probably going to get it. I'm almost certain it's on your consent agenda, I believe. Is that correct, Commissioners? Well, I know the first one um, that was deferred was item eight, and then this one is... I think it's number 24, I believe, is what I was... 24, okay. Item 24. Yeah, yes, that, that one is fine. I, I believe everybody is going to be pretty happy about not having to drive uh, into Wilson County. I certainly will be happy that people will stay in Davidson County and utilize their tax dollars here. So with that, I would ask you to please support the projects, and I appreciate your time. And once again, I wish each one of you a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the new year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Great to see you. Let's see, make, and we'll make sure we don't miss any council members. I didn't see any. Lucy, did you see any? Oh, council lady, you want to come on up? You want to wait? Okay, perfect. We'll make sure that we take care of you, okay? Which item are you here for? I want to make sure we don't miss you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. All right. We are now on to seeing no other council members. Uh, oh, Councilman Davis, you want to come up? 
I wasn't sure if you want to go now or come on up. Welcome. It's good to see. You. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit here. I want to thank you all for your volunteering time. Your time. I'm not happy today, okay? I'm not. But I'd rather make sure that I'm correct. Maybe someone that didn't misspoke. But I'm heartbroken today because I have neighbors from another neighborhood association. I have neighbors who are rezoning their personal property. It's on a collector street, it's on Douglas. It's the case on the corner of Joseph and Douglas, right across from another large unit development. And they're in opposition of another neighbor who lived there for 30 years, but not in opposition of the larger one further up a ward, or Montgomery. We're gonna ask for a deferral. And the applicants here, but I have some procedural questions too. Okay, planning staff approve it, it meets it. And I'm only human. I know sometimes I'm supposed to be above certain things. But sometimes you gotta ask for forgiveness. I'm asking for your forgiveness tonight. Because I hate it when I have to tell people, especially in long-term residents, that you came to the Cleveland Park Neighborhood Association meeting. You're submitting good site plans. But you said you were gonna come back before you go to plan. Well, we came to you. And as we're working through the process, they come back to the neighborhood meetings to keep in contact, because we still have three readings in council. And we have approval for the staff. It fits the policy perfectly, collector straight. But the biggest issue they can't complain about, oh, it might allow Airbnb and other stuff. It's on a collector street. You know how bigger problems the Airbnb? How people's houses are getting broken into? I got kids going to school, you know, because we stop free lunches at certain places, you know? And sometimes when I'm trying to help a long-term resident, who is purchasing a home in the neighborhood from the proceeds from the house, be paid off and be in a brand new home and have plenty of money in afterwards. But when you go to an October and November meeting in your neighbors, and people say they like it, but then people from the next neighborhood association jump in there after we just did a policy plan that lasted eight months, I'm gonna flood this room with support next time. And I'm sorry we're gonna have a long meeting. But it's really time for us as Nashvillians to let regular people do things. And so, anything on my agenda, I think most of it's deferred anyway. And I apologize for that next long meeting. So Councilman, you're asking for a deferral on item 37? Is that what you wanna do? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to hold these people up. Let's defer everything that's in District 5. Let's just defer it all. Would you like uh, one meeting or two? Um, or what would you prefer? For the for the Joseph, we'll do two, we'll do two meetings. For two the meetings, la so last meeting would, in January. That would be January 24th. That's fine. Would that be okay? And I'm going to, since it's a planning staff approval, I'm going to request a bill early too. So it tracks with the council there, so they can advertise for the public hearing and the new hearing, both hearings at the same time. Because once again, everything's being paid for out of this person's pocket. There's no Roy Dale, there's no Tom White, there's no James Weaver. I understand, and it this, was on our this, I'm sorry. No, no, it's That's, okay. And I'm, That's why we When put you it mess with the regular people in my district is when I really get mad. And I apologize once again, but just to make sure, you know, just to make sure, you know. 
May, may I offer, you had asked about a procedural question. Yes. So could I ask staff, do you have the council agenda or the council meeting schedules? Did, were you, would you be able to offer any feedback on timing for requesting the bill or would the councilman be okay if we deferred it the second meeting in January and then we could reach out to you and talk through what, what that would look like in we terms of schedule. Does that for, work? For, for time wise, yeah. Okay. All for right. Time. So we'll, we'll plan to reach out to you. I know it's the holidays. Everybody's trying to go out and be with their families and their friends. Okay. So we can do that just to save time. Okay. Thank but, you. But, and I apologize in advance. We're going to crowd this room with support and it's because of stuff like this. God bless you all. Thank you, Councilman. Any other council members? I want to make sure we get everyone. All right. Council, you want to go now or? Okay, come on up. Welcome. So there's two properties on reading tonight on Brewer Drive. Number it's 30. Item 35, I think. And 30. Hold on. And yes. Yeah. So. 35 um, and 30. Yeah. Sure. This is actually one of these is the corner of Nolensville Road and Brewer Pike and Brewer. So it's definitely Nolensville Pike. It's commercial. There's a small little section of this particular parcel that is still zoned residential. So it is a parcel that has two different zonings on it. So to get a um, you know, to have one zoning and to be able to have a really good property, um, you know, built on Nolensville Pike, I, you know, just am in support of having that going commercial. The um, entrance would be on Brewer, so I would be making sure that the entrance would be coming in off of Brewer because Nolensville, the portion of Nolensville is really close to the light, so it would have, the entrance and exit would have to be on Brewer. Um, there is um, there is obviously opposition. A lot of the neighborhood is just scared that you're going to take commercial all the way down the street, which I don't foresee any councilman or any other you know community members would ever want to you know do that. So um, so I am in favor of this particular property as well. And then the other one. Um, is right directly beside of it. It's currently a daycare. It's been a daycare, I don't know, at least 40 years. Um, and they are interested in doing a rezoning as well. They have not been a daycare, they have not been open for about a year now. So I think they're really scared they're going to lose their grandfathering clause as well. There is a contract um, where the individual is trying to sell it to somebody else to open up a daycare, but she's just been unable to open the daycare. So it's right beside. So all this is just kind of a one, you know, one uh, parcel. So I am in support of approving that. So just want to let you know. Thank you, Council Lady. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. I saw Council Lady Haywood. You want to go now or during your, uh, you wait. Okay. Thank you for coming down. If we're just everybody hold on one minute, we're trying to organize, make sure we have everything on the consent and agenda. Correct.
We've had a lot of changes in the agenda, so we want to make sure we get it correct so we don't mess up. One more minute, we'll make sure. All right, so now we are on to, Commissioner, sorry about that, and the audience. So we are on item E, which are items for deferral withdrawal. Lisa, let, we'll go slow, make sure we get these correct. And then, Commissioners, make sure you pay attention because we'll get these correct. The following items are for deferral or withdrawal. Item number 1A, 2017 CP 005003. On page six of your agenda, the East Nashville Community Plan Amendment, staff recommendation is to withdraw. The associated case 1B, 2017 SP 013001, on page six of your agenda, Riverside Village SP, staff recommendation is to withdraw. Item 2A, 2018 CP 006002, the Bellevue Community Plan Amendment, Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 2B, the associated case, 2018 SP 043001. The Security Central Storage SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th Planning Commission meeting. Item number seven on page eight of your agenda, 2018 SP 069001. Ridgecrest at Vista. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number eight, 2018 SP 074001, 3049 Earhart SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number nine, 2018 S110001, the Snyder One Lot Subdivision. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 24th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 11A, 2018 CP 010003, the Green Hills Midtown Community Plan Amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th Planning Commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. <coughs> item 11B on page nine of your agenda, 2018 SP 077001, the novel Edge Hill SP. Uh, staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th Planning Commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 12, 2018 CP 011002, on page nine, South Nashville Community Plan Amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the February 28th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 14B, 2007 SP 156003, on page 10 of your agenda, the Collection Nashville SP Amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 16, 2018 SP 061001, on page 10 of your agenda. The 725 Hart Avenue townhomes. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 18, 2018 SP 076001. The 2138 18th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. 
Item number 19 on page 11 of your agenda, 2018 SP 083001. The 808 at Skyline Ridge SP staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 20, 2018-S-188-001, the parks at Cane Ridge. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 24th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 21, 2018-S-204-001 on page 11 of your agenda. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 24th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, I would like to note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 23, 2018-S, 210-001 on page 12 of your agenda, agenda, the Mosswood subdivision lot 57. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number 34 on page 13 of your agenda, 2018-Z-125-PR-001. Staff recommendation is to defer one meeting to the January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Is there, if there is no objection from the applicant? We'll make sure, because the councilman deferred this, so, okay. Item number 36, 2018-Z-127-PR-001 on page 14 of your agenda. Staff recommendation is to defer one meeting to the January 19th, January 10th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting if there's no objection from the applicant. Forever hold your peace, okay. And item number 37 on page 14 of your agenda, 2018-Z-128-PR-001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 24th, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. And 38, is 38 in there? Oh, I'm so sorry. I have two lists. Um, item number 38 on page I'm 14 of your agenda. I appreciate it. 2018-Z-129-PR-001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th Planning Commission meeting. Excellent. I know that's confusing, all these numbers. All right, Commissioner, so y'all keep, keep me straight to make sure we get these correct for the record. So items for deferral withdrawal are items 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 7, 8, 9, 11A, 11B, 12, 14B, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 33, 34, 36, 37, and 38. Is that correct? I I think we may have an objection from the applicant to deferring item 36. Well, then, um, oh, what is it? Well, the, well, then we're going to have to hear the, we'll have to hear it. Do you want to hear it? And okay. So item 36, we'll put on our regular agenda to hear. Uh, Chairman, I don't, we didn't hear 33 called out. 33, 34. No, I mean, we heard you call it out, but we didn't hear it. Oh, Lisa's 34. Yes, 33. I have notes written all over so, it, but yes, that one is also on the consent. And let me read the number for the audience. Yes. 2018-Z-124-PR-001 on page 13 of the agenda. This is a rezoning on Elliston Place. And staff recommendation is to defer to the January 10th Planning Commission meeting. All right, so let's make sure we, we have, um, well, let's start from item 20. Okay, so item 20, 21, 23, 33, 34, 36, 37, and 38. 36 is now off of that. Oh yeah, and I'm sorry, and 36 will be heard. I have it on my two here. All right, let me read those one more time. Just for the record, items 20, 21, 23, 33, 34, 
37 and 38. All right, is that correct, yes. commissioners? All right, so you've heard those numbers. Maybe I should read them one more time. No, I, I think we're clear for the record. Okay, I just wanna make sure everybody's comfortable. Um, those items are for deferral. Yes. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, is there, is there a motion to approve? We'll need a motion to approve the deferral. It's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Eyes have it, and we got that very complicated list voted on. Now we're on consent agenda, and this has changed drastically from your agenda too, so please pay attention, and we'll get through this together. All right, Lisa, go ahead. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. As a notice to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearings will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. And the following items are on the consent agenda. Item number six, 2018 SP 062001 on page seven of your agenda. The 222 through 228 Donaldson Pike SP. It's a request to rezone from R10 to SP for various properties located on Donaldson Pike at Woodbury Drive to permit 13 multifamily units and 5,800 square feet of office space. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 10, on page eight of your agenda, 2018Z009TX001. It's a request to amend section 1728 of the Metropolitan Zoning Code relative to underground utilities. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 15, on page 10 of your agenda, 2018SP059001, 1605 Seminary Street, it's a request to rezone from RS5 to SP for property located on Lock Road and Seminary Street to permit eight multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 17, 2018 SP 072001, York Place. It's a request to rezone from RS10 to SP zoning for property located at 728 Due West Avenue to permit 16 multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 22, 2018 S206001 on page 11 of your agenda. 1807 Riverwood Drive. It's a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located on Riverwood Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. And I will note that um, Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 24, the 6086P003 on page 12 of your agenda. North Lake Village revision and final. It's a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a portion of a PUD for property located on Old Hickory Boulevard to permit a fuel center. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item 25, 2004 P036007, Nashville West Shopping Center Revision and Final. It's a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a portion of a planned unit development district for property located on Charlotte Pike to permit retail and financial institution uses. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 26, 2005 P 010005, the Nashville Commons at Skyline Revision. It's a request to revise the preliminary plan for a portion of a planned unit development located on, prop located on Dickerson Pike to permit retail, restaurants, and a hotel. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 28. I'm, and council, I'm sorry, and Commissioner Blackshear needs to recuse her eyes from item 26. Item number 28, 2018Z103PR001 on page 12. 
It's a request to rezone from RS5 to R6 for property located at 616 Vester Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 29, 2018Z, 118PR001 on page 13 of your agenda. A request to rezone from IWD to MULA zoning for properties located on Hermitage Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 30, Item number 31, 2018Z, 120PR001 on page 13 of your agenda. A request to rezone from RS5 to RM20A for property located on Torbett Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. And item number 34, 2018Z, 124PR001. A request to rezone from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 707 Ward Street. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, 34 was deferred. I'm sorry. Thirty-four is deferred. Got it. <coughs> Under other business on page 15 of your agenda, item number 35, 39, contract amendments for Robert Lehman, Anna Greider, Michelle Hollingsworth, Jean Burse, Sean Shepard, Justin Wallace, Jess, Jessica Buchler, Jean, Jen Johnson, and Greg Claxton. Item number 40, contract renewals for Kyle Lampert, Abby Rickoff, and Marty Sewell. Item number 41, DTC modification process. Item number 42, the DTC bonus height certification. And item number 46, to accept the director's report and approve administrative items. All right, so I think, I think we got this. I think item, so here are the, here are the items to, for the consent agenda to be passed, commissioners. Items six, 10, 15, 17, 22, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 31, 39, 40, 41, 42, and 46. Is that correct, everybody? That's correct. All right. A lot of changes. So you've heard the items for the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, and forty-six. All right. Any other discussion? All right. We'll need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a motion? There's been a motion. Second. Any other discussion? We'll make sure. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Which means these are the items. Oops. Lisa. The applicant for item 36 would like to defer that item for one meeting to the January 10th, 2019 meeting. Okay, let's, um, we'll go ahead and, um, that's a, that's a, can be a proper motion. Is there a motion to defer item 36? for one meeting. All right, there's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of deferring item 36, one meeting, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. 36 has been taken care of. So, that means everything has been taken care of except these items that we're gonna hear tonight. So we're gonna hear item 3A, 3B, 4, 5, 13A, 13B, 14A, 27, 30, 32, and 35. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So if you're here for any other item, you can, you can enjoy our conversation as we move through the Planning Commission meeting. So let's go ahead and start. 3A.
Good afternoon. Um, item 3A is a request to amend the North Nashville Community Plan. Um, the request is to amend the North Nashville Community Plan by changing the area in red from T4 Neighborhood Evolving Policy to Transition Policy. Um, staff, staff recommendation is to approve. Um, the zoning of the area is RS5 and R6 with OR20, IWD, and IR surrounding to the south. Um, the policy is T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving. And um, T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving is intended to create and enhance neighborhoods to provide more housing choices and are either, they're, they're, to provide more housing choices. They are improved by pedestrian, bicycle, or vehicular connectivity, or they're served already by high levels of connectivity. Um, and so redevelopment and infill in these areas take, take into account the current context. The area has a supplemental policy, and in the, in the image you, hear, you see here, you can see the entire policy with um, Pearl High School in the center. And then so the, the, the study area for this policy amendment is down to the, is on the south end. And so the policy, uh, supplemental policy, its role is to encourage gradual <coughs> redevelopment in the area rather than a wholesale change. Um, the intensity of development should occur at the lower range of the T4NE policy and utilize a design-based or alternative zoning districts in its design. Um, so a little bit of background about this project. Uh, there was, it was, the associated zoning case was heard at the Planning Commission Oct on October 11th. Um, staff recommended disapproval due to the current policy, which allowed for residential uses only. And the decision, the decision was deferred to further, for further exploration. Um, so in doing that, we had a community meeting on November 27th. Um, and the, the, the residents that attended were generally open to the change in policy. They expressed a desire for development in the area to, com to combat crime and illegal dumping. Um, so what you'll see here in this next image, you'll see in the lighter red is the study area. And notice that a lot of the, par the parcels within that area are vacant. Um, and then you have the industrial uses and the commercial uses to the south. Um, so in the Nashville Next Growth and Preservation Concept Map, this area is an area called Transition because of its adjacency to a Tier 1 center. Um, just off the map here is Charlotte Avenue with its um, one city development, and then so at Clifton Avenue, there's an, um, an increase in development of office uses within that area along the edge of that Tier 1 center. Um, so the Growth and Preservation Concept Map, sorry, I lost my page. Um, so the amendment area is part of the growth and preservation concept mapped, as I said, in the transition area. And the goals for, um, the, for North Nashville in this, as part of the growth and preservation concept map, is to provide opportunities to reinforce identities. Um, well, the goals for North Nashville as part of the, as the community plan um, is, to is the creation of diverse and affordable housing options near transit and commercial centers, the enhancement of commercial centers and corridors to provide a brand, and to provide uh, more connectivity through bikeways, greenways, and multi-use paths. Um, so the uses of transition, the policy, is often applied to Nashville's entering neighborhoods and adjacent, centers, adjacent to centers and corridors. Um, it promotes medium to high density and compact form of development and provides opportunities for small scale office and or residential development within these areas um, and encourages complete neighborhoods through, with high connectivity, various mobility options and diverse housing. And so as, as part of the analysis, we um, staff determined that the, the transition policy is compatible with the surrounding policy because it provides a buffer or a transition between the residential areas and the commercial that was industrial that is now becoming commercial into the south area. Um, it's proximity to a major corridor, which is Charlotte Pike. Um, it's a half mile from Charlotte Pike and, the, and a bus station and a bus stop there. There are two or three other bus stops within a half mile of the, of the site. Um, and again, the transition from the corridor into the neighborhood, it would help with that, um, address those needs to keep the, to keep the character of the neighborhood. Um, additional connectivity recommended in the policy is is a benefit to the neighborhood and the adjacent commercial. And as part of that, it is um, the adjacent commercial that's being developed and has additional connections as part of that. And it would also provide for an opportunity for additional housing types within this area because it would, this area allows for more of a mixed use, <coughs> higher density than the T4 neighborhood evolving would allow within the, um, within the area itself. Um, as I mentioned about transportation options, it's proximity to existing and planned transit. It's a half mile from Charlotte Pike. Um, the existing street and alley network offers high connectivity and walkability currently. 
um, and the development under construction, as I said, would provide another additional connectivity in that area. And so with that, the staff recommends approval. Thank you, Stephanie. We'll go ahead and hear 3B. The next item on the agenda is item 3B. The request is a rezone from R6 to MULA zoning. The site consists of two parcels totaling 0.21 acres and is located at the terminus of Mary Street, approximately 900 feet east of the intersection of Mary Street and 25th Avenue North. As a point of reference, this is Clifton Avenue to the south of the site, and this is 25th Avenue North to the west. The site is currently vacant. Staff's recommendation is to reopen the public hearing and approve if the associated plan amendment is approved and disapprove if the associated plan amendment is not approved. The site is currently zoned R6 and lies within a large area of single and two-family zoned properties. The surrounding properties to the north are zoned RS5, while property to the west is zoned R6. Surrounding properties to the south are zoned for light industrial uses. The site sits at the edge of a large area of T4 neighborhood evolving policy with T4 mixed use neighborhood to the south and district industrial further to the east. The applicant has requested a plan amendment to change the land use policy to transition policy as you just heard Stephanie present. This slide shows the boundary of the area being considered in that request. The rezoning permits a mixture of uses including residential, retail, and office which is consistent with the proposed transition policy. The mixture of uses permitted within the requested MULA, MULA zoning would allow for development that could serve as a buffer between the industrial and commercial uses south of Mary Street and the existing one and two family neighborhoods to the north of the subject property. Staff recommends that the public hearing be reopened and approve the request if the associated plan amendment is approved and disapprove if the associated plan amendment is not approved. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, so we'll open the public hearing for items 3A and 3B, although we will hear, we'll vote on them separately at the end, as y'all know. So proper procedure is to we'll go ahead and open the um, item for public hearing. The applicant has 10 minutes. You can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and Commissioners. My name is Kevin Gangaware. I'm with Civil Site Design Group. Um, and I'm grateful for Stephanie to uh, explain to us that this um, zoning had been heard back at your October 11th meeting. Uh, at that meeting, we had a lot of conversation about, I think, uh, at least I walked away from this meeting feeling like the commissioners thought that our rezoning request was reasonable but couldn't support it because it didn't match the policy. Um, and so... Uh, I think it was Lucy's idea, which was a great idea to, for us to defer for two months. Our clients had the time to do that so that we could try to determine uh, what our next steps would be. Um, so after speaking with the planning department, it was determined that maybe a plan amendment to change the, um, change the policy in this area may be appropriate. We talked about that in the meeting. Uh, we're mixed use uh, to the south of us. We're industrial district to the to the west, to, uh, to the east of us. Uh, maybe there was a transition policy that needed to be uh, implemented here. And so I think that's what the planning department decided would be appropriate. So uh, that's how we get to this point. We've had several community meetings on this issue. Uh, to remind you, we're redeveloping the building across the street, repurposing a warehouse into a mixed-use building. We needed this space for parking. All we want to do is parking on it. However, uh, the zoning that we're asking for would be MULA, so it would allow some residential in the event that parking never happened. However, that's all we plan to do with it is put a, a parking lot in to basically activate this dead-end street. Uh, currently. So again, we've had lots of neighborhood meetings and it's just been um, very well received by everyone who's come to the meetings. I, I can't think of one negative response that we've had from any of the neighbors or anyone who's been, we were on consent earlier uh, and then I think we've gotten pulled off. So we're not exactly sure who's not happy about it. Uh, it's it's kind of, this is a little bit new to us. So we're anxious to hear um, if there's something that we can work with the uh, the community on, so I'll, I'll hold some time for rebuttal. 
Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. And we'll reserve two minutes for rebuttal. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. We yeah. have two minutes. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Councilman Bedney, Dr. Sims, Commissioners. My name is John Stern, and I live in Cane Ridge, which is a long way from North Nashville, uh, but a place that I have spent plenty of time. My contact information is available through uh, the staff or the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department. Um, I come before you really just as a simple citizen who has spent thousands of hours trying to make the community planning process here in Davidson County cause the significant and meaningful engagement of its citizens uh, into defining their future. No easy task. More on that later. My comments really are focused on my disapproval of the community plan amendments process uh, and the documents then that come from it. Quite simply, I believe that the fashion in which these discussions are being framed leads me to believe that we are at best turning the professional planning process on its head. Instead of developers uh, reviewing the specific community plans of these neighborhoods uh, in order to identify places where they can come and develop, instead, what, is hap what appears to be happening today is that developers are coming to the planning department, just like this last presentation, coming to the planning department requesting a zone change. And when that zone change is clearly not going to be approved, they're then told, all right, well, let's just change the plan. And the problem we've got there is today you had eight different plans, and I will get more to that over the next three, uh, but I disprove it because I don't think it's legal, and I think it's a problem going forward. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, rebuttal, two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Stern's comments. Um, and I understand, I'm not sure that I can rebut if he's, uh, if someone's just against the process in general. However, in this case, I think the process is working. Um, we did have a community meeting for people who are directly affected by this, and they were overwhelmingly uh, for this adjustment. Uh, and as we talked about previously, uh, the, the thought that every policy is perfect when they bring it off the press the first time is just not realistic and that these things should and, and could be uh, evolving as they go on. So the idea that we should never change them, I think, is just uh, one that I, I certainly can't support. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Tibbs, you want to go first? Um, just really quick, I guess, um, Stephanie, but there, there was a lot of, um, at the community meeting, you did get a good turnout and uh, was good collaboration amongst the affected neighbors. Okay. Um, there were, there was a low turnout for the meeting, but there were people who've been involved in the process, throughout the process with Mr. Gangaware and his, and his firm with the redevelopment that's going on. The, the, the one representative from each of the churches on the corner there and two or three of the, I think it, it was six people in total came to the meeting, um, neighbors from the area who got the notice and were just curious about the process. So I, we talked about not just this policy and how the policy works within changing this policy in this area, but also in general, how, how we talk about policy in the planning department. Okay. Uh, being kind of familiar with this area, but it seems like it's this is uh, com uh, consistent. So I would be for, especially with the way the process was presented. Commissioner Blackshear. Um, I apologize in advance. This might ask you to repeat some things that you already stated. Um, but to the um, 
the citizen's comment, the opponent's comment about basically the process and how this works. Can you explain to us why you think um, the amendment is appropriate despite the fact that we went through the national next process and um, the policy was determined to be something else? Sure. Um, well, this policy, I believe, has been was part of the area before Nashville Next, and it was updated as part of Nashville Next. But also, um, it's on the edge of the special of the policy area. I'm trying to find the an appropriate image for this. So this is the entire special policy or um, supplemental policy area that talks about the that, that encompasses the neighborhood evolving area. And as you can see at the bottom here. Of the of this area is where the zoning is is uh, the the plan amendment is where, where we're talking about, and so its proximity to uh, um, this uh, urban mixed use area as well as to the industrial areas that are adjacent and the railroad tracks made it more of an appropriate area for a transition between the higher intensity uses to the south and the neighborhood to the north. If I may, it sounds like you're asking sort of a broader question about how we think about Nashville next right. over Thank time and, and sort of how we think about policy amendments to that. Right. So, right. My question is basically, like, what's changed? How, how do we evolve as the neighborhoods evolve since the passage of Nashville next? Yeah. Lee Jones, I wonder if you might, um, who's the head of the long range planning section, just give sort of maybe a short sort of how we think about Nashville Next in terms of a long-range planning framework and how it is designed and intended to adjust over time to neighborhood, sort of how neighborhoods are evolving um, and what the sort of plan amendment within that, how that works, I think. Yeah, and, and you all, commissioners, have heard us refer to the comprehensive plan as a living document that's intended to be updated uh, through a process. We have a process in place to make updates to it because this is a this is a large county and national next um, look the growth and preservation concept map is the the major land use component of national next the 14 community plans are the more detailed community character policies uh, that further detail out the growth and preservation concept map so um, this north nashville the community plan was updated in 2002 and um, it was translated uh, into CCM in 2008 and then adopted as part of um, National Next in 2015. Um, we did some detailed neighbor design plans for this area in particular uh, back in 2002 and, and looked at this as a transition. Um, but the more broad focus and the translation of um, the, the past community plan into CCM and then into the National Next you know, policy, um, some of the nuances, some of the details along these edges of policy categories that may have been new with the update to CCM um, didn't have the level of detail that we have when we go in and look at a small area plan like we're doing a lot of now um, or a more detailed plan update for one community plan. So um, this is an ex expectation. I mean, we expect that some of these CCM policies are going to need to be looked at in greater detail, and that's why the policy for the plan amendment, the process for the plan amendments in place, um, that is, while it, it may not be perfect, it's a it's a process that is is very open and communicative, and we have sometimes multiple meetings if we don't have good turnout, and we try to get as much engagement through this process before making a recommendation to you all on changes to the community plan. Commissioner Bishop. <clears throat> Um, that, thanks for that clarification on how things evolve. Um, I remember this case from the last time, and there were a lot of community members speaking in favor of it at that time. So um, uh, I drove around that area. It totally makes sense, and maybe back in 2002 it didn't. But now the way it's adjacent to that mixed-use industrial area, it just really makes sense. I don't think this is a capricious um, decision on behalf of planning. I think it's really logical and I am in favor of it. Council? No comment. Commissioner Moore? 
I think that in most cases, a plan amendment, I would be a little more hesitant, but I think it is appropriate just based on um, this area and the surrounding policy area, so I'm in favor of it. I, I agree with staff and other commissioners. I'm in favor. Um, to follow up uh, with Commissioner Blackshear, uh, what triggers a change? For example, this is going to become more transitory. What if somebody on the street behind it now declares, well, the transition's one block off? Where does, where does this start? Where does this stop? Sometimes staff will initiate um, a review. We'll see a lot of zone changes in an area that seem like we need a more collective understanding. Other times you'll have a specific proposal that'll prompt a broader discussion. Very rarely, or I shouldn't say very rarely, but very often when we get a single proposal like this, we'll take the opportunity to look at the whole area and say, how has this evolved over time? What are best practices in planning um, today? And how or does the proposal meet those goals? Um, and so, it, and, and sometimes council members will ask for requests. And then finally, I'd say commission the, the commission or community can ask for a, can ask for a review. So, yeah, I, I, I'm seeing a subtle shift in our thinking toward transportation as kind of a key element in when we want policy amendments. And if you take our urban core neighborhoods, we're all within that. I mean, we could change whole neighborhoods if you use the corridors and close proximity and need for transportation as a. And so I, I worry that um, I, we don't really have in place um, a really visible or clearly understood process for how not just a lot, but an entire street gets changed. Um, and I worry about the president that, that that's actually setting. Um, but I think, too, in this instance, you had a number of properties that were vacant. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you have neighborhoods that are in urban areas that are, you know, have a lot of housing, people are still there, there's yeah. investment, that prompts a number of questions. When you have a number of vacant properties and you hear from <laughs> residents that people are, are dumping in those areas, that there's crime and other issues, I think as a commission, we have to look at those conditions on the ground and figure out what a, what an appropriate response is. I don't think, I don't think, I mean, if you look at the aerial here, I don't think we can sort of mm -hmm. ignore the con, nor what's happened on the ground there right. over time. So we have to be responsive to those conditions. And I know as a commission, we are really studying hard, how do we move toward data-driven decision-making and this is one place I hope we can begin to look at is when we make these kinds of changes, what actually happens to the, actually the ability to produce affordable housing when now it's going to become, it has the right to become more commercial. And so let me just keep listening and thinking. Commissioner Haynes. No comment. We'll need a motion, but uh, we'll need to take these up separately. So we'll have to first do 3A. So the first motion should be a 3A motion. I move to accept staff recommendation on 3A. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Ayes have it. 3A is adopted. Now it's appropriate to vote on 3B. So we'll need a motion for 3B. I move to accept staff recommendation on 3B. It's a proper motion. Is there a second? Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Ayes have it. 3A and 3B are adopted. Now we are on to item four. Item four is a request to amend the Southeast Community Plan. The request is to amend the policy for the 20 acres shown here outlined in red east of Nolansville Pike and south of Harding Place about a mile and a half south of the zoo. The existing character of the plan amendment area is low density one and two story single family homes. There's some limited redevelopment and investment under current zoning along Flora Maxwell Road. 
Goins Road and Old Goins Road are primarily undeveloped with no discernible character. Development to the east is predominantly suburban single family. To the west, there is a mixture of commercial uses along Nolensville Pike. Directly to the north is TriStar Southern Hills Medical Center. And to the south is multifamily and commercial development. The subject properties in gray are predominantly zoned one and two family residential R6. The request is to change the suburban neighborhood maintenance policy to suburban neighborhood evolving on the properties outlined with the dash line and to add a supplemental policy to the properties outlined in red on Old Goins Road to address infrastructure deficiencies. Staff's recommendation is to approve. Suburban neighborhood maintenance policy in the light yellow is applied to the plan amendment area and to a majority of the properties to the east. This policy is intended for the maintenance of the residential character of the neighborhood in terms of its development pattern, building form, and land use. Within the plan amendment area, conservation policy shown in green designates a stream buffer along the rear of the southern portion of the lots on Flora Maxwell Road and an area of steep slopes to the south. Suburban neighborhood evolving policy shown in the beige color to the south and in the central part of your screen and on the other side of Nolensville Pike is the policy that's being applied for. T4 Urban Community Center shown in purple is applied to the north and northwest along Nolensville Pike for the mix of uses along the arterial. Suburban mixed use corridor policy in the hatch pattern is applied to the southern portion of Nolensville Pike for the predominantly suburban commercial strip development that exists here. The requested suburban neighborhood evolving policy is intended to create suburban residential neighborhoods with the best qualities of classic suburban neighborhoods and to include greater housing choice and improved connectivity. The applicant has proposed this change in order to allow for a greater variety of housing types in this area. These suburban neighborhood evolving areas are characteristically undeveloped, underdeveloped, or suitable for substantial infill and redevelopment, and are anticipated to be developed in suburban residential patterns, but at higher densities than classic suburban neighborhoods, with smaller lot sizes and a broader integrated mix of housing types. On September 11th, planning staff held a community meeting to discuss the plan amendment request and process and answer questions. Three people attended along with the applicant and development team. All of the attendees were property owners in the plan <coughs> amendment area and were interested in the development of their properties. All expressed support for the policy change and the desire to see increased investment in the area. The main topic of conversation was infrastructure, in particular the poor condition of Old Goins Road. Staff discussed the recommended supplemental policy to address the infrastructure deficiencies when development is proposed. Following the publication of the staff report for the September 27, 2018 Planning Commission meeting, Council Members Potts, Dowell, and Lee raised concerns about the need to address the historical significance of the area to the African American community. The applicant deferred to this Planning Commission meeting in order for an additional community meeting to be held with Metro Historical Commission staff present. On November 14th, planning staff held the requested additional community meeting. Six community members attended, including a descendant of the original settlers of this area. Council Member Potts was also in attendance. Staff from the Metro Historical Commission provided an overview of the historic and cultural significance of this area to the African American community. Founded in 1868 during Reconstruction, Lake Providence was one of the oldest African American communities in Tennessee. Freed slave families established farms and dairies in this community named for Lake Providence Missionary Baptist Church. The church remains in existence but has moved to a building further south on Nolensville Pike. A number of the streets in this area are named for original settlers, including Taylor, Goins, and Flora Maxwell Road and Alice Avenue. Because no historic structures have existed in the area for decades, the proposed policy change and redevelopment of the Lake Providence community will not impact the integrity of its cultural significance. The main topic of conversation at this meeting was again on the infrastructure capacity of the area in terms of road conditions, right of way, right of way widths, topography, stormwater infrastructure, and utility pole locations. Given the intent and characteristics of suburban neighborhood evolving policy, staff believes that the proposed amendment area is a suitable location 
for this policy for the following reasons. First, the designation of the area on the growth and preservation concept map from National Next. Secondly, the appropriate ap application of this policy. Thirdly, the surrounding land use policies. And fourth, the transportation infrastructure and connectivity in place and planned. The designation of this area on the growth and preservation concept map from Nashville Next, you can see the proposed amendment area outlined in the dashed line located directly south of a tier one center in the orange. Tier one centers located throughout the county are intended to concentrate future growth and support transit with a dense mix of homes, shops, and parks. The plan amendment area itself is identified as predominantly being within a transition and infill area in the beige color. These are areas of higher density housing appropriate along and around corridors and centers to encourage residential infill with a variety of housing types in order to grow the market and demand for consumer services and the demand for transit in tier one centers. The application of suburban neighborhood evolving to allow a denser housing type and encourage infill development is appropriate at this location. Suburban neighborhood evolving policy is appropriate in areas where a high proportion of the land is vacant, where there is no established lot pattern, or where the condition of the existing development is declining due to age. The plan amendment area includes a number of vacant properties shown in the green, concentrated along Old Goins Road and the north side of Alice Avenue. The lot pattern throughout this area is inconsistent, and a number of homes are in poor condition due to age, all of which meet the applicability criteria for a suburban neighborhood evolving policy. The plan amendment area is adjacent to two higher intensity policy areas. T4 Community Center in the purple is the most intense mixed use policy in the urban transect. One of the largest uses here is TriStar Southern Hills Hospital, a major employer within walking distance of the plan amendment area. Suburban mixed-use policy in the hatched orange along the southern portion of Nolensville is intended for a mix of higher-density residential and mixed-use development. Homes such as those yielded by suburban neighborhood evolving policy are needed to support the viability of consumer businesses and, and population in community center, in the more intense community center and cor corridor policies along Nolensville. Suburban neighborhood maintenance applied to the east of the amendment area in the light yellow is applied to an area of consistent suburban residential development with a character that is intended to be maintained. By applying neighborhood evolving policy to the highlighted area, an appropriate transition of density and intensity of development can be made from the commercial land use policies and development on Nolensville to the established neighborhoods. An example of such a transition is shown on the other side of Nolensville Pike to the south and to the south, where a neighborhood evolving policy is applied at a similar distance from the corridor as the proposed amendment area. In addition, there's a large single parcel of neighborhood evolving policy that breaks up the central portion of the amendment area. Currently vacant, when development of the parcel occurs, it will significantly impact the development pattern of this area. Applying neighborhood evolving to this area allows for the consistent application of policy to both sides of Nolensville Pike in order to guide appropriate development. The proposed amendment area is located just east of Nolensville Pike, which is a, classified as a five-lane arterial boulevard in the major and collector street plan. There is existing bus and BRT light service on Nolensville with inbound and outbound bus stops located at Flora Maxwell and Nolensville Pike for the bus and a stop located south of Higgins Street for the BRT light route. Nolensville Pike is also designated in Nashville Next as an immediate need high capacity transit corridor slated for near term improvements to transit service, allowing a, a wider range of housing types supported by neighborhood evolving in locations with convenient access to major transportation and transit networks that are existing and planned on a primary corridor to downtown Nashville is appropriate. Within the plan amendment area, Old Goins Road has significant infrastructure deficiencies that include poor pavement condition, insufficient roadway width, and a lack of sidewalks and stormwater infrastructure. In order to address the potential effects of future rezoning requests to increase density and intensity on this substandard road, staff recommends adopting a supplemental policy with the intent to promote a coordinated effort towards infrastructure improvements through redevelopment of one or all of the subject properties. 
Amending the policy and applying a supplemental policy is appropriate at this location because of the opportunities for revitalizing an underdeveloped area with a generally inconsistent development pattern, for providing homes to support the commercial goods and services on Nolansville Pike, for providing an appropriate transition from the corridor into the established residential neighborhoods further east, and for increasing the connectivity of the area via the upgrading of Old Goins Road. Therefore, staff recommends approval. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate that. We'll open this item for public hearing. The applicant has 10 minutes. Come on up. And you can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Thank you for coming down. Absolutely. Thank you, Commission. Um, thanks for hearing me this evening. I hope this is just one of many on a topic such as this one. Um, I just want to say uh, my name is Edward Henley. I'm the principal for Pillars Development. Um, and I just want to share a little bit about the impetus behind the reason for the application. Um, I am a firm proponent for affordable housing. I purchased a parcel on Floor Maxwell Road, which is at the north end of the area that's being presented to you this evening. And the parcel is a double wide parcel for the neighborhood, so about a, approximately 100 feet wide, and it also abuts um, another property that has a transferable easement that came with that purchase. And so my objective was to um, present to the commission with an SP to creatively um, provide affordable housing by increasing density. I'm on that corridor. There has been some um, development on the corridor closer to Nolansville Pike or on the street closer to Nolansville Pike, as Anna mentioned. Um, but as conversations um, with the neighborhood um, residents, I found that they were definitely in support of affordable housing. They were also clearly identified the need for improvements or the desire for improvements in that neighborhood. Um, there were two major topics that came up as, um, I'll say, areas of concern when I talked about more density, and that was um, the narrowness of the street, as well as um, parking and safety in terms of more and more vehicles on the street. Um, I let them know that the density increase would be relatively small, considering I only had one parcel, um, but also our goal was to completely absorb parking interior to the parcel, so there would be no um, increase to on-street parking or anything that endangered people in terms of students or children who were playing in the area. Um, as we had conversations with planning, um, it was made made myself aware that the area was actually in neighborhood maintenance, which is something that was a little bit surprising to me, um, pending the location. Um, but I will say that as I talked to others in the community, we definitely found out that there was a lot of history in the area. Um, you know, as someone who supports and actually facilitates community engagement, I love talking to people, um, but I found out unsolicited that there was a lot of history for someone who looks like myself in that neighborhood. So some of the conversations ran a little bit long, but I think in that opportunity, people had a lot of objections to what I was proposing, they would have felt comfortable to share them. They did not do that. Um, but again, we decided to have a conversation with planning about exactly what we should do um, to best facilitate an SP. Um, in that process, we were told that it was neighborhood maintenance, and they suggested a community plan amendment. Um, I'd like to turn it over to uh, my civil engineer who's here with me. He can better define exactly what happened after we began having conversations with planning. Um, and if you do have other questions for me, and I'd be here for the rebuttal. Good evening. Um, I'm Chip Howarth, SNH Group. First off, thank you all for your time up here. You do it every other week. Very appreciative as a city. Um, thank you very much for that. Also, I um, really want to thank Anna. This has been a long, well, Ed would feel a long process, um, but it's been a collaborative process um, working with planning on this. We're appreciative for that collaboration. Um, we think, think we've ended up at a result that accomplishes many goals for many different parties. Um, we were much like the one before us. We were on consent and we were pulled off, so I can imagine what the uh, objection is going to be to that. Um, you know, going back to the process that, you know, when we approached planning about this, the, you know, the area was identified as neighborhood maintenance, which Ed said was a bit of a surprise to him because, you know, you're right there next to the community center policy. You're right off of Nolensville Road. You've got this weird chunk of neighborhood evolving right in the middle of the area that we're proposing to um, change the policy of. And so in conversations with planning um, around the idea that, you know, Nashville Next is a living document because we're in a living, changing city, um, the idea was reached to change the policy of the area today. Um, we had, again, we've had two neighborhood meetings. Um, the response has generally been positive. Um, we'll hear from Mr. Stern here in a minute uh, on his concerns. But generally been positive for the neighborhoods. A big concern for most of which was 
and uh, talked about and has been addressed in the supplemental policy is Old Goings Road. And I wish Councilman Potts was here today to speak to this because my understanding is Old Goings Road is the only non-metro owned alley in the city. I think that's right. So anyway, like no one can do anything to it. Uh, Metro can't, I doesn't have responsibility for it, so no one does. So the only way to ever fix Old Goins Road, which is, you know, pot it up, uh, tear cars up, people dump trash down there, is to, through this policy where you place the restrictions on it for future development. I mean, that's, that's how it's going to get done. So I thought that uh, accomplished a goal um, necessary for the neighborhood. Um, so that's why we're here tonight. Um, again, Ed's been passionate from the get-go about the affordable housing concept. That's another conversation for another time. But um, through our conversations with planning, we feel that this is appropriate and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. And we'll hold two minutes. Thank you, sir. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. You might have, you should sit up front. Yeah. <laughs> it's elementary school. I stayed away from sitting up front. Uh, one thing that the planning staff has always done very well, and that is able to rationalize darn near anything that is being proposed. And I mean, I sit back there in awe at their skill. Uh, the idea that old Goins Road that they showed you, uh, it was a insinuated that it was a public road that was all torn up, but in fact, it's owned by the people that live there. Uh, the property was turned back. Very aggressive, very wonderful young men trying to develop one parcel of property. So when they came to the planning department and proposed this idea, uh, they were told that the policy doesn't allow it. So what do you want to do? You can change the plan if you want to. And that's really a, that's really a di difficult thing. If this happened, you know, once every quarter or something, that's one thing. But you had eight community plan amendments before you today. And that's problematic. Uh, rezoning for a small parcel should not be driving our community plans. Of course, when we do it, we want to look at trends in the zoning uh, that uh, the planning staff would have data on, um, as well as the community needs. But it should be the community working together with planning and the data, a data-driven process, to create or update our community's uh, living planning documents. Um, one thing I want to point out is that four people participating in a community meeting is not an acceptable level of engagement. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Please come. You have two minutes and state your name and address. I support those guys. I own the cop property on the gold going, old going road. I do something for my heart. This need to be cleaned up and the need to develop, I think. And then what, just state your name and your address, ma'am? Yeah. Your name? Old, uh, Lily Chen. And address? Uh, it's a few property on old going road. I, I'm a realtor. I drive over there. When I saw first the property, this need to be developed, this I think. So I first start, bought the first one. But it takes years to develop. This road, I have never been seen this kind of road in, in my whole life. So I'm supporting you. Thank you. This need to be cleaned up. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming down. She's in support, obviously. OK. Just clear it up for the record. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, rebuttal? Two minutes. Well, that, that was great to hear. Um, I'll keep this short as Chip may want to add something, but um, I think one thing about this process that I found is there are a lot of people in the community that do see a need for improvement. They desire improvement. 
They may not be well enough resourced or well enough informed on the process to go through this. We talked about the community um, meetings not being well attended, although there is a process for notifying them. And the ones that we did have attend um, largely just expressed that they would like to see the neighborhood improved. And there was no direct opposition to what I was proposing. In fact, there was support for it. And as you saw, there's support for improvements in the neighborhood. So I hope that this conversation can be carried forward. I think it facilitates um, very healthy conversation and, of course, brings an opportunity to people who often don't have a voice about their communities and what they want to see. Anything else? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll take exception that um, planning's not taking a big role in this process. Um, with that, I mean, this we had a uh, the disagreement was more of a policy discussion than anything related to this. Um, I think this um, this whole process is designed to encourage collaboration between the development community and planning. I think planning is doing working very hard in that aspect, um, and we appreciate where we ended up. Um, through that process with planning. Thank you. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Haynes, how about you go first? No comments. No comments. Commissioner Sims. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Anna. This was really well written and gave us a lot of both history and a short amount of pages, so thank you for the good work you did here. Um, I am I'm back to where John's trying to talk tonight about the process and whether or not it, it is intended to be a collaborative between developers and planning, but it also is supposed to be a collaborative between communities and planning. And I know just from my work in the neighborhoods that many of them don't get the word. They are, are they're given a short amount of time to get there. There's a lot of reasons why neighborhoods can't be involved as quickly as developers who do this full time can be. I appreciate very much, Mr. Kinley, how you got involved with this and talking to the neighborhood. I do have concerns about how many policies we actually are changing in the absence of some really deep neighborhood conversations. Commissioner Gobble. Um, I agree with staff. Commissioner Moore. So I think, and maybe you alluded to this, Lucy, in the last case, this is another instance where someone came with a very specific need and you looked at the larger area and determined that it may be appropriate to correct change. Yeah. We don't look at policies typically by one property. Sometimes that will prompt the discussion. <coughs> you yeah. stated it correctly. I, I'm inclined to support staff's recommendation, but I'll continue to listen. Councilman. This is uh, a very interesting conversation um, coming after the workshop we just had this week where we were really uh, interested in improving the ways in which we engage with the community and get feedback on, on long-term plans, on issues that impact the wider range of, of things. Obviously, uh, uh, if, when the community comes together, works really hard to stop or to encourage a particular development pattern, they think that's it, that they don't have to really be paying attention every five minutes to see if there is a new change to the thing, and so we are putting the burden on the residents to be constantly paying attention to those signs on the side of the road and trying to figure out what happens uh, with with uh, development that they have uh, work on. The staff does a really good job in uh, reminding uh, the developers to talk to their council members to engage with the community. Uh, I I know that they tell all the developers to talk to me as a council member when they want to do something in the district. And obviously, I don't do anything. I don't bring anything to the staff, or I don't allow it to come to the staff until I have a community meeting in my district. But again, it puts a burden on the community to, to be on their toes all the time, just paying attention. So um, I think the burden is on us uh, to, to do that thing that we challenge ourselves at the last meeting, to really have a better a way to engage with the community uh, to fine tune that wider range, a more inclusive look at uh, growth in the city. Uh, that way we are not forced to do this piecemeal approach. However, uh, that is a, a very involved, expensive uh, proposition, and I know we all are committed to that uh, challenge. So. Although it will be in the, an ideal world, it'll be great to, to stop doing this piecemeal approach. 
the city keeps moving and, and we still have to deal with all these requests and needs that people have. So I'm going to support this. But I also uh, want us to remember that gentrification is coming south from Woodbine <coughs> into the Antioch area. And as we do these changes to the plan and density comes in, although this gentleman said that he's interested in affordable housing, I haven't heard what's he going to do to help the people that live on those homes to move to one of the houses he's building. So there is, there is a real problem for many of our communities that are seeing the places they knew for a long time, the places they inhabited, to be able to stay there. So that's a long spiel to say I'll support it. Uh, but I, I think it's, we really need to commit to, to, to do a better engagement even better than what we do, because failure is not an option, right? I mean, we really have to make it work. So that, that's, my, my, that's my story. Thank you, Councilman. Now, it, it, those workshops, just so the, the public knows, they're, they're an open public meeting. So if anyone wants to come and listen to the, our in-depth discussion about our improvements in long-range planning, and I would encourage Mr. Stern to attend those. Uh, and I think that, you know, we, we get what you're saying, uh, but it's also, I'm just adding this because I think it's important that we do more work than just coming here and, and then I, I believe that the, the staff does a great job and, and we have some plans moving forward and, um, Lucy's been with us as the director for six months and so it takes some time. And then, Councilman, you briefly touched on it, which is really important. In a dream world versus a practical world, when the council is cutting your budget, we have to be very, um, w there's only so many resources. In a perfect world, we would spend a lot more money on notice. We would spend a lot more money. So it's, it's balancing that act. And I believe that our director and, and the staff and this commission is, is very committed to this process. Yes, does it, maybe it looks a little weird. We have some amendments to the plan. Um, one reason why we have a lot of plan amendments is because we're in November and December, we only have one meeting and so it's not spread out. So I just want everybody to know that, that those meetings are open to the public and that they should attend. And Lucy, um, the director, has um, and the team has some good plans and then it includes all of us making those decisions. So. Hopefully, um, this is really good discussion. I know that we'll continue it. So, Commissioner Bichelle. Um, I thought Commissioner Sims' comments and Councilman Bedney's comments are really interesting. Um, and I would be interested in whatever developments we're considering in the future, but um, I am inclined to agree with this uh, staff. Commissioner Blackshear. Commissioner Tibbs. Um, I, I support, uh, and I, I also support the way that it is a living document and that there is a, a forum to be able to, um, you know, have a dialogue about uh, opportunities to improve. The, these right here have been through developers, but we also know that the community actually got an amendment kind of pushed through as well over in East Nashville. So I think it's as good. And so I just want to say I'm, I'm very much for how this process has worked. And with that, I make a motion to approve item number four. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? The second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of item four say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Item four is adopted. We are on, let's see where we are on time. We, we've got, we've got to do more, okay. if that's okay with the commissioners. Okay. We are on item five. Okay, um, item number five is a request to rezone from AR2A to a specific plan to permit 54 single family lots at 6280 North New Hope Road. The site is located um, south of Old, Old Lebanon Dirt Road on the west side of Nor North New Hope Road. 
staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. This case, a, a little bit of background, a reminder, this case was um, deferred by the applicant at the September 13th, uh, 2018 meeting um, after a public he hearing was held and closed uh, to allow sufficient time for the applicant to prepare a traffic access study uh, to further evaluate site access and to facilitate a neighborhood meeting. Um, the Planning Commission also requested that staff evaluate surrounding development patterns, um, including densities and lot sizes, and to review building elevations. Uh, the staff's evaluation of the surrounding, um, the staff report was updated to include um, our ev evaluation of the surrounding lot sizes, and the traffic study was submitted to Metro Traffic. Uh, traffic has since provided a recommendation, which is included in the report. Um, also, the applicant held a neighborhood meeting, um, and um, staff's recommendation is unchanged from our previously published report. Additionally, some minor revisions were made, and the those are reflected in the report as well. The um, site, um, here, here is North New Hope Road um, over here. Old Lebanon Dirt Road is off to the north here. Um, it's approximately 10 acres. Um, the surrounding character includes a mix of larger residential properties and already developed single family lots. Um, including the Chesney Glen subdivision, which is over here directly west of the site. The site is located or is zoned AR2A and is generally um, located in a larger area of residentially zoned properties with some AR2A zoning located on the north side of Old Lebanon Dirt Road. The plan proposes 54 single family lots. Um, the northern half of the site includes um, 32 lots with a minimum lot size of 2,300 square feet and the southern um, half of the site includes larger um, uh, 22 lots in the 5,000 square foot range. The larger lots front a new public street, um, and, and um, the majority of the smaller lots are oriented around common um, open space, including two central courtyards that are located between the smaller lots and North New Hope Road. For reference, again, over here is the Chesney Glen subdivision. Um, as a reminder, the site is served by a combination of public streets and um, private drives. Um, there are two public streets, including Glen Tree uh, Drive, which is an existing street in Chesney Glen, and Glen Tree Drive will um, extend through the site and connect to North New Hope Road. Um, and then a new public street will extend south from Glen Tree Drive, um, providing access to the southern lots and um, creating options for future connectivity to the south. A private north-south drive um, will connect from the Glen Tree Drive extension to the north, tying back into North New Hope Road. Um, and there are also several east-west drives that um, come off of the, the north-south drive, and, but these, um, these east-west drives do not connect to North New Hope. Glen Tree Drive and the private north-south road um, are the north-south drive are the only two connections. Um, they've, they've been circled in red. To North New Hope Road. The, nor the Glen Tree or the new public streets include five foot sidewalk and four foot planing strip, and uh, North New Hope will be improved um, per the major collector street plan standard, which is a six foot sidewalk and a six foot planing strip. Open space is incorporated throughout the site, including two large central courtyards located um, between the smaller lots and North New Hope Road. And um, the, the um, courtyards are central to, this, to the smaller lots and can be accessed um, internally or directly from, from North New Hope. The southern open space includes existing vegetation uh, down here, which is indicated to be preserved. Um, and open space has also been identified along the uh, northern and western property lines. Um, a tree preservation easement is located um, at the back half are behind um, lots 34 to 44, um, and that indicates that the trees, the healthy trees, will be retained. Um, staff recommends additional landscaping be included along the western uh, property line north of the Glen Tree Drive extension um, to buffer any um, impacts from the vehicles traveling along that drive. 
The revised plans are generally consistent with the previously reviewed plans, um, but have been updated in a few areas. Previously, there was a fifth lot shown where this yellow star is, um, and staff had concerns that this lot did not provide, um, the inclusion of this lot didn't provide enough space for an internal sidewalk connection um, and a sufficient buffering um, within the site. And so staff had requested this lot be removed and um, the plans have, have been updated to remove this lot, um, allowing sufficient space in there for, for an, an internal sidewalk connection. The second update um, was to the maximum height that this has been reduced um, from three stories and 36 feet to two stories and 36 feet. Um, the development summary has been modified to reflect this change and the applicant included these elevations as part of the official application. Uh, the final SP will um, include architectural elevations that demonstrate compliance with these elevations. Staff also looked at the surrounding um, lot sizes and densities um, and determined that subdivisions in, pro in proximity to the site include varying densities, ranging from approximately 1.96 dwelling units per acre to 4.78 dwelling units per acre. The Chesney Glen and Farmingham, subdivi Farmingham Wood subdivisions are located uh, immediately south and southwest of the site. Um, Chesney Glen has an average, or um, a, um, the density of 3.86 uh, units per acre, and Farmingham Woods, located down here, um, has a density of 4.78 units per acre. Both of those have minimum lot sizes of 5,000 square feet. The proposed plan results in a density of 5.4 dwelling units per acre. The slight increase in density um, compared to the existing developments is expected in a neighborhood evolving area um, adjacent to a collector street, such as North New Hope. In T3 neighborhood evolving areas, infill development is anticipated to be, to be developed with a suburban um, residential pattern, but at a higher density with, and with greater housing variety than classic suburban residential neighborhoods. Um, and this is done in order to provide a range of housing choice where all points of the life cycle can be accommodated. In keeping with the adopted growth and preservation concept plan of Nashville Next, neighborhood evolving areas should contain a mixture of lot sizes and housing types to provide options for future residents and to avoid homogenous developments. The plan proposes moderate density development and varying lot sizes and configurations consistent with T3 neighborhood evolving policy guidance to, arrange, uh, to provide a range of housing choice for residents. The development also includes lots that are grouped together around common open space, creating areas for active and passive uh, recreation. And the plan enhances the street, set, street network with new public streets, um, increasing the connectivity to the broader area, and therefore staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Thank you. So um, this is this one's a little different. We we um, as far as process, we have already had the public hearing, um, but you've received I. Everyone has received several correspondence asking us to open up public hearing again. That would take a vote of this commission. Generally, you know, I've always been trying to be in favor of listening to the people. Um, but it's really up to y'all. Uh, so the first thing that we probably need to decide is if, if we want to open the public. Well, we have to decide if we want to open up public hearing. So why don't we, instead of opening it directly, we let's have discussion on... Um, well, even before we, we have discussion, we really would need a motion to reopen the public hearing. A move to reopen the public hearing. Second. That's a proper motion and second. Now we're on discussion. You want us, any discussion or are y'all ready to vote? How about we try the vote since I don't see any other discussion. So all in favor of opening the public hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, let's open the public hearing. And um, is the applicant in the room? So you'll have, you've been here before. You'll have 10 minutes, and then you can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Thank you for coming down. Thank you so much. My name is Greg Gamble, and I have a quick PowerPoint presentation that I will um, uh, ask staff to bring forward. 
I'm here tonight with uh, Greg Tidwell with Smithy Studios, with um, uh, Bill Charles, uh, Land Management, <coughs> and with Adam Sager with Dale and Associates, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Um, we are not opposed to any of the staff comments that are uh, listed as a part of your report. Um, if you'll skip forward to the next slide, Planning Commission had several comments at the last planning commission that we were uh, we were at, we did have a delay in our process. We wanted to make sure we had sufficient time for the um, um, access analysis, which has been prepared, submitted to staff, and reviewed by staff. If you'll slip to the next. Sure. Uh, we did have a neighborhood meeting in October that was hosted by Councilman Glover. <clears throat> Uh, one question that was asked at the last planning commission meeting was how does lot size and density adhere to the T3 policy area? If you'll flip to the next slide, the T3 policy area, uh, the T3 policy area really has four uh, policies that address intensity of a neighborhood, massing, orientation, setbacks, and density. Under density, it says density is secondary to the form of density. <clears throat> to the form of development, however, T3 neighborhood evolving areas are intended to be moderate density with smaller lots and more diverse mix of housing types than are typically found in T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance areas. We have four different lot types. Uh, three of them are alley loaded, ranging in size from 34 to 44 foot. We also have 50 foot front loaded single family with their access from the, from the street. Uh, field next slide, please. You'll see here the makeup of the T3 neighborhood evolving and the T3 neighborhood maintenance within this character area. You'll see to our immediate west is Chesney Glen, to the south is Farmingham Woods. Next slide, please. The character of the master plan that we have designed for Wembley includes significant uh, organizing elements of our neighborhood parks. These parks are located directly on New Hope. The, we have designed this master plan so that no homes back up to New Hope, so there's no backyard, and we've protected the private area of the community using these common open space areas, really as gathering spaces. Um, we've also respected the rhythm of the architecture down New Hope using these open space areas to divide and separate the architectural massing down the street. We are uh, maintaining 10-foot uh, separation between all buildings. In this exhibit, you will see uh, how we have an integrated mixture of architectural types within the neighborhood, but also pedestrian connections from one house to the other. Those are all consistent with the policies that um, have been uh, identified for neighborhood evolving. Uh, next slide, please. In Chesney Glen, uh, it's important to point out that all of the homes are also single family detached homes. That the average lot width is 40 foot wide. That the setbacks uh, between buildings is also 10 feet, but there are limited sidewalks within this neighborhood. That the open space that is within uh, Chesney Glen, this neighborhood, um, has a conservation policy on it, and this is an area of steep slopes, and the homes back up to that open space area. If you look at uh, the next slide, please. If you look at this area that's directly adjacent to Wembley Park, totaling 10 acres in size, there are also 59 homes. So this area directly adjacent to Wembley uh, does not have that conservation policy on it, but it does have <coughs> densities of, of equivalent uh, comparison. Next slide. At Farmingham Woods, then just to the south of us, uh, it also has standard lot widths between 40 and 42 foot it has front setbacks that are between 10 foot and 20 foot, and they maintain 10 foot separation between buildings. The open space that is preserved and set aside uh, for Farmingham Woods is also uh, has a conservation policy overlay on it because it has some steep slopes. It has a stream that runs through the property. Uh, they do and did set aside an area for a playground. Uh, but predominantly the open space is that conservation policy area. Uh, next slide, please. So if you look at comparison between 
Wembley Park, Chelsea Glen, and Farmingham Woods, we do uh, have uh, 5,000 square foot lots. Um, we are also have alley loaded lots ranging in size from 34 to 44 feet. You'll see here the area in green that's identified. This is a five acre area uh, that has 33 alley loaded lots here. Um, and um, if you divide that area by 33, you have 6,500 square feet uh, allocated to each home. We've, instead of putting it in the lot, have put it into common open space areas for the, the residents. Uh, next slide, please. The open space policy says neighborhoods should provide inviting, functional, accessible open space as integrated as a part of the development. Open spaces are, to cre are created for not only stormwater management, but also as site amenities, and that's what we're doing with our parks. Uh, we are maintaining 34% of the property as open space, but 13.5% of the total land area is usable park land. Next slide. We were asked uh, what our plan was for tree preservation. We do in, intend to preserve uh, as many trees as we possibly can on the property. That's important to the value of the homes within uh, our neighborhood and our adjacent uh, neighbors. It's also important that we enhance the landscape areas where there's not sufficient trees along the, the buffer and the boundaries of the property. Next slide. We were also asked, do we have, uh, why isn't our access on North New Hope aligning with Landings Way? Uh, we're pointing out with this exhibit that this drive is at the high point of the ridge, giving us sufficient sight lines in both directions. If we aligned with Landings Way, we would compromise the sight line distance to the right and would not have sufficient sight line distance. So we are in the safest location. Next slide. Our public access then out onto New Hope um, uh, also, uh, was, there was a question whether there was sufficient site uh, access in this location, and you can see here from this illustration that we do comply with the AASHTO Green Book standards for sight line distances uh, for this, um, uh, the speed of the road. Uh, the last slide is the architecture, and just wanted to point out that this has been included with the SP. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have, and I would like to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, we'll reserve two minutes. Appreciate you coming down. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. I'll line up. Uh, please, you got two minutes, and so state your name and address. Okay. And I appreciate I'm, you coming down. Is this on? I'm Wayne Sharber. I live across the road from this at 6285 North New Hope Road. I appreciate the opportunity to be before you all today. <clears throat> Thank you for your times that obviously you've committed to this to review the various comments that have come in. I think people in the neighborhood have made the comments. They've submitted them to y'all by uh, electronic methodology. I submitted some several times. I've also submitted a summary of set of comments, not knowing whether or not we were going to have a public hearing today to make my comments. But what I'm concerned in living across the road and having been there for 38 years, having built on the five acres, is this project needs to be safe for the community. It needs to be safe for those persons that are going to be adding to the community uh, as they come on to New Hope Road. I, I proposed in my comments, if you all have reviewed those, that the private drive, the alley, for 32 lots doesn't seem logical in good planning. Why are we doing that? They make that a public road up through there, make it go to the extreme north end directly across from Landings Way to intersect onto North New Hope Road, eliminating that intersection to New Hope Road down at the historically dangerous curve. That's good planning, that's safe planning, in my opinion, and in the community's planning. There's, I know there's a lot of community opposition and concern, rightly so, about the transportation plan and so forth, but infrastructure is going to take time in order to be accommodated in that area of the county or in any area of the county. But let's do what we're doing now in a safe way and in, provide a safe entrance and exit from North New Hope Road. Uh, the other comments relative to the uh, density, I propose that if they were to make that road a private drive, become the public road to go all the way up and come down directly across from Landings Way, eliminating four lots there, expanding the size of the adjacent, adjacent lots, as well as combining some lots. So if you look at those notes that I've presented, 
uh, you would see other comments. I'm sorry about the rushing through 22 minutes, but that's all no, I know. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Next. Hi, I'm Vicki Jones. I live at 4248 New Hope Meadow Road, so that tells you where I live. I uh, find it interesting that they're doing lots of comparisons to Chesney Glen and Farmingham Woods, but the subdivisions that they say they're comparing to in terms of house size and uh, price are New Hope Meadows and Cobblestone Landing, both of which have properties in Wilson County. And um, so the traffic study does not include times when Wilson County was in school. So I don't think that it's really valid in terms of access. Um, also, it doesn't include data from 2017, which shows much more increase in at traffic. It's in my comments that I emailed late last night. Um, and so I really feel like the traffic study should be redone in terms of Wilson County being in school and also uh, including the data that shows more growth in the area. Um, did any of you go, besides Commissioner Sims, go look at the area? Um, so you saw the two-lane road that's very narrow. There's no place to walk. You also saw the five-acre lots all along the, the road. And if you saw the subdivisions, you saw that they're bigger lot size than these. Um, so really, we don't have the infrastructure for all the growth in that area. If we did and we could use public transportation, that would be great. I would love that. But we do not have that at the moment. It doesn't fit the, it doesn't fit the other neighborhoods very well. And if it looked more like the, the top half in the north part looked like the bottom half, I don't think you would have near as many people upset about this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well. Good evening. My name is Erin Evans. I live at 5109 Vineyard Point in Hermitage. First of all, thank you so much for reopening the public hearing. We're really appreciative of that. Um, I'm a member of the Donaldson Hermitage Neighborhood Association, so that's the primary reason why I'm here today to support uh, our neighborhoods. Um, and the biggest thing that I wanted to kind of circle back on really related to when we were here for the original public hearing is the idea of community engagement and how we were working with the community to, to be able to hear their voices. And so we were able to have the public um, meeting that was scheduled appropriately and everything went fine with that. But I think the, the most significant thing that came out of that meeting is that we heard we're not changing anything unless planning says that we have to change it. So really that ended the conversation before it really got started, which is why we're back having this conversation again and, and really wanted to be heard again, in particular about the traffic study. Um, as Vicki just mentioned, the traffic study was a, a really key driver for people that were in the room and ultimately the request was made by the neighborhoods to please have the traffic study conducted when school was in session and unfortunately Davidson was in session Wilson County was out of session and because of the proximity of these neighborhoods and how they aligned to Wilson County and the traffic flows from Wilson County it was a, a huge missed opportunity on the part of the traffic study to be able to communicate that information effectively so in the end I have concerns about the density the neighbors have concerns who are not here about the density, um, but ultimately we know you all make the decision, so we appreciate you taking the time to hear us today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <coughs> happy holidays, uh, Commissioner Bedney, uh, Council Monsters Bedney, and Commissioners. Um, I'm Tim Weeks, President of Donaldson Hermitage Neighborhood Association, so I Hopefully we might get a little extra time on the clock. Yep, five minutes. Not that I need it, but I do talk slowly. Um, uh, good old Southern boy. Uh, but uh, I want to uh, start by talking about the process uh, also. Um, the fuss a little bit that, you know, there's four of us here to speak against this property. And back in September, we had maybe 15 to 20. A lot of people would have come back down here after the community meeting to again speak against this. But the public hearing part on paper was considered closed. We emailed repeatedly asking for this to be opened. Of course, you couldn't decide to reopen it, and we thank you for that, but you couldn't decide that until we all got here. But how can you organize and motivate people to take time out of their work or their personal schedule to come down here when you can't tell them whether the hearing is open or not open. 
that it's closed on paper. So people just say, well, you know, to heck with it, because they're not going to let us speak anyway. So there's a lot of people that were interested in this project and this development that are not here. There's only four of us. That is not representative of the neighbors that are still opposed to this project. With that being said, um, again, just a few points. Wayne and Vicki made more detailed points that were all very good. Uh, in general, you know, the traffic study, unfortunately, was made at a bad time. Uh, Wilson County schools were out. There's one big subdivision right across the street um, from this potential development. Half of it's in Davidson County, the other half is in Wilson County. There's a lot of traffic that comes out of that subdivision, very big homes, uh, beautiful area. But, you know, you might as well, when you go to holiday, it's just not going to be the same uh, as normal traffic uh, that you would see uh, during school. Uh, the density argument, you know, the, the plan has always been for our area of moderate density, and I guess it just comes down to what do you call moderate density versus evolving. You know, evolving, what does that really mean? It can be anything Roy Dale says it is, and the staff may agree. Yes, okay. We, we, we uh, work with you quite a bit. It looks like a good plan. On paper, it does look like a good plan. You know, they've got some space and some trees and some nice things. But again, this is really something better suited for the urban core and not for the suburbs of Hermitage. I've driven through this area many times just trying to imagine this development being where they propose it to be. There's pockets of countryside. There's pockets of what used to be big farms. There's lar very large subdivisions with large homes and big yards. And then there's a few smaller subdivisions that were part of the PowerPoint. Of course, they want to look at the smaller subdivisions. But this looks like East Nashville being transplanted into the, the Davidson-Wilson County line. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb it will not look like it belongs. And the whole point of the reason why neighbors are against this, besides the safety issue of the curve in this road and where the entrance is going to be and whether there's a private or a public road, is will this look like it blends in with the rest of the community? And I can tell you it will not. It's going to look nice, but it's going to look weird. And that's why people are like, I don't know whether this belongs. Now, the final comment is that Councilman Glover, you know, talked about, well, this has been in the works for two years. And almost there's an inference like, oh, well, this has been going on so long, you guys should just approve it and let's move on. Well, it took one year and 11 months for them to finally have a real community meeting. They avoided it. You know, so there's some truth here that I wish you guys would look at and say, you know, we shouldn't approve everything that comes in front of us. And this is one that I really wish you'd send it back to the drawing boards to make it less dense. Let's look at the roads. Let's look at a better traffic study. This can be done better. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Can I have the 20, 30 seconds that I didn't use earlier? Ma'am, um, unfortunately, our, our, you, you, could, you could tell another neighbor to say something that hasn't spoke. But um, since I didn't use all my time, uh, Mr. Atkins, I just wanted to say that someone left this. I wanted this since I had it. Someone left this in their seat, and I want to be sure they got. I'll give that to the gentleman back there. All right. A few housekeeping. Um, it's all right. Anyone else wishing to? And ma'am, if you want to, you can always email us and submit comments to the to the staff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make sure everybody's spoken there that wants to speak. All right. Any, seeing no one else wishing to speak in opposition, two minute rebuttal. Thank you. My name is Adam Sager. I'm with Dale and Associates. Uh, Going to try to breeze through a few of these items that were discussed. Uh, a big one was safety. I know it was brought up at the last meeting and tonight again. Uh, we actually pulled. Uh, from TDEX, TDOT's website. It's called E-Trims, and it's in the traffic report. The history of every crash that has been reported on North New Hope Road, and that goes down from Central Pike all the way up to, I forget what the North Road is, 
um, over the last three years. And over the last three years, I want to say there was just a handful of accidents. All of them were minor. Uh, there were no fatalities, and none of them were reported in that curve. Uh, so we, we did do our homework and check on the safety of the road. Yes, there's a lot of people coming in through Wilson County. Um, there was talk about infrastructure. For the size of our development, I want to make this clear with the traffic study as well. In Metro Zone Code, we are not warranted to do a traffic study until there are 75 lots, and we are proposing 54. Because of the request, because of, of the attention brought to it, we went ahead and did the traffic study, which is why we had to defer. We wanted to make sure we got updated counts. We want to make sure we're analyzing it correctly and that staff had an opportunity to review that. Um, and so the traffic study shows that we're going to do a left turn lane. And for a project of this size, we're doing a lot of impact to help the, the community and try to mitigate and alleviate any traffic concerns there are along the road. Uh, community engagement. We started community engagement back in February, March of this year. We've held uh, several community meetings, two uh, full community meetings that have, were, were scheduled through the council's office. The councilman was there uh, for the last one. Uh, we are moderate density as defined, and it does conform to the policy. Um, let's see, what else was there? Well, my time's running up, but I really appreciate your all time, and uh, we had asked for an approval. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, declare the public hearing closed. <coughs> Commissioner Blackshear, you want to go first? Sure. Um, first thing I'd like to do is just thank staff, not only on this item, but on all the items for all of your hard work. I know this is um, often a thankless job, so thank you for doing this. Um, I have a lot of questions, actually. Um, one of the first questions um, I have is um, regarding the traffic study issue. So it looks like the traffic study actually was not required because the number of homes um, didn't necessitate it. Um, however, if the traffic study was done during a period of time when Wilson County Schools were in session, I mean, would that have impacted any of your analyses as it related to traffic? Um, the traffic study was completed and was submitted to the Metro Nashville Department of Public Works, where they reviewed it and have agreed with the findings, and those are included within the um, staff report. But if it was done, I guess, when Wilson County Schools were in session, would that, I mean, I'm assuming that would have um, had a different, I mean, the, the, the effect of those traffic studies. I recommend, I don't know if someone from Public Works is here, and, and if not, I'd ask the applicant who would have hired the traffic engineer to clarify what was considered. Yes. Um, there were two counts done. The previous study was looking at counts back in March of 2017, 2018, I don't remember the year, and then again, we did counts more recently, I believe it was in October. And so schools were in session, I don't know about Wilson Counties because we're on the Davidson County side. This particular traffic access study looks at the trips that are generated in the north-south pattern to determine how long we should make a turn lane and for it to be safe. There's factors of safety that go into that. And so all of those were generated. Um, had the schools been in session, it would not have made a difference on the length of the turn lane. Um, it really wouldn't have made a difference because again, I don't, I don't wanna downplay it. I understand traffic's an issue, but 54 lots just doesn't register on a mass scale when you consider everybody else around us. And so whether the school was in session or not probably would not have uh, any neg or any significant impact on the findings of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So the traffic studies that I guess you coordinated um, would not have, if Wilson County Schools were in session, it would not have impacted what you were looking at, which is the length of the turning lane, but it probably would have um, been helpful to see in the aggregate the impact when school is in session on the overall neighborhood. Potentially, we do access studies to look at intersections, which would have been the intersection to the north, our intersection, how it operates within Chesney Glen, the interaction with North New Hope Road. Um, we are putting in two exiting lanes from our development out onto North New Hope Road and one entering lane. 
and then with the turn lane and with the widening on North New Hope Road, I can tell you there's really no other improvements in the immediate vicinity that could be done, whether the school was in session, whether it wasn't in session, whether you added 100,000 more cars to the road, because it's still, we're in a through, uh, in a location along the road that's a two-way traffic, it goes through, we're not at an intersection, you know, like we're at Central Pike, or in North New Hope or anything like that. And so the impacts of the development and the corresponding improvements uh, probably would not have been affected uh, regardless of whether school is in session or not. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So uh, additional questions. Um, and I just wanted to say that I understand the neighbor's concerns about, I mean, you're so close to Wilson County, it, it does make sense to make sure that when you're looking at traffic, that everything that impacts traffic, and obviously schools impact traffic, are taken into consideration. Um, the next question I had was the definition of moderate. What is one person's moderate is another person's intense. Um, so is there a standard definition of what moderate density is? So what I can tell you is that the, all of the policy areas that, were, that are uh, defined in our um, community character manual, all of the CCM policies that you'll hear us talking about, neighborhood maintenance, neighborhood evolving, those have a range of, um, uh, range of zoning districts or uh, that translate to densities that are outlined as being appropriate within areas of those policies. And so for the T3 neighborhood evolving um, policy area, which this is a part of, it ranges from RS, you know, 5 to RM20. So there is a range of different densities that are appropriate within different segments of those policy areas. Um, and so something in the 4.5 um, per acre density, which this is, would be considered on the lower end of what is appropriate within that overall policy area. Thank you. And my last question, um, I, I think it's my last question. Um, on the eastern <coughs> border of the property, so this North New Hope Road, right, that borders the property to the east. What, I mean, what buffer, I guess, is planned for that eastern border before you hit North New Hope Road? So um, between all of those lots that border North New Hope, um, above the, the road extension are all corner lots, and so we've asked for additional buffering. Um, I, I'd say the distance between the smaller lots and North New Hope is somewhere between 15 and 20 feet, and they've designated that as a buffer. We've asked for supplemental landscaping in that area, um, aside from a standard buffer um, to, to really uh, keep that natural appearance along North New Hope. So that's one of the conditions? Is that it is a condition, right. Um, so this, this is really my last question. Um, one, of the <laughs> one of the neighbors um, suggested, and I know there's, there seems to be some discrepancy between how dangerous um, the intersection with North New Hope Road would be, but one of the neighbors suggested extending the private drive to intersect with Landings Way and then eliminating that intersection. So that was looked at early on, and and that was um, determined that the the intersection between Landings Way and the existing public street in, in um, Chesnick Land, it would have created an offset intersection, which would have made it less safe um, to, to move it up to the north and along that northern property line, which is why, um, as Adam explained, um, they were able to get better sight distance by, by shifting it down um, because it is the, the ridge of the road versus, versus connecting there because Landings Way and um, I think it's Glenborough, they don't um, align exactly. So it was okay. determined to be safer this way. Thank you. Commissioner Michelle. You're not gonna believe it, but Commissioner Blackshire asked all my questions. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Just kidding. Councilman? No comment. No comment. Commissioner Moore. Commissioner Gobble. Uh, yeah, I 
certainly am very sympathetic to the neighbor's concerns and appreciate those. Uh, I do think this is a good solution. Uh, I'm concerned about the traffic and the intersection with Glen Tree on the New Hope Road. I know New Hope Road is a is a narrow road, um, but if the Public Works is okay with it, I'm comfortable with the conditions and staff's recommendation. Commissioner Sims. Uh, I have no questions. Commissioner Tibbs. Um, it's like I almost skipped you, but I okay. started with Commissioner no, I don't Lockyer. have anything else to add, actually, exactly what Commissioner Gobble was exactly my feel, and I had that same concern about that. But um, if, you know, with the view study that was done and if traffic is okay with it, then um, then I'd be, you know, um, that, that was my concern, actually, that entry onto New Hope. So uh, with that, I'll make a motion um, to approve staff recommendations for item number five. That's a proper motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. 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 So, one, two. Yeah, let's do, let's do hands. So, um, all in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. All opposed? Three. Five to three. And it passes. All right. So, eh, we've been here <clears throat> approximately two hours and 15 minutes. It's probably time for a restroom break for the commissioners. Um, and so we will, if that's okay with everybody, everybody okay with that? I want to make sure commissioners, without objection, we'll, we'll break for about 10. allowing us to take a quick break. We really appreciate that. Um, so one of our items, uh, the applicant um, is apparently, there's news on a, on a new item. So 14A, Lisa, will you update us on what the applicant would like to do? On um, sure, the applicant on item 14A, with, which is 2018 CP 012005, South ben, Southeast Community Plan Amendment, has requested a one meeting deferral to the January 10th uh, Planning Commission. I think they can confirm for us if, well. Is that correct? Noreen. He may have already left because he told us he wanted to do oh, okay. All right. So let's yeah. do this, uh, commissioners. Let's let's vote on that. Um, 14A. 14A. 2018 CP 012005. Move to defer 14A. Uh, Southeast Community Plan Amendment to one January meeting. 10th. <laughs> move so to defer a meeting. Uh, move to defer 14A one meeting. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? I need to recuse myself from that one. And, and Commissioner Blackshear will recuse herself. So all in favor, any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. And C Commissioner Blackshear will recuse herself on 14A. So we are on 13A. All right, now we're ready. Um, item 13A, Southeast Community Plan Amendment. This is a request to change the policy of parcels shown here it, near, just north of the intersection of, of um, Nolensville Pike and Harding. Um, this is just, that, that's the Walmart that you can see. Where's my mouse here? That's the, um, the Walmart that you can see at the bottom there of the screen. Um, that's at that location, it used to be the old Harding Mall. And so closer and look here, as you can see that, um, well, that's the wrong map here. Okay. There's associated zoning case with this as well that you'll hear the presentation on after I get finished. Um, I wanted to point out one thing first before I get into the presentation. And we went out to the community for this particular plan amendment and we had a, I'll go ahead to the next one. We had a study area drawn around just the area that was to be rezoned or, or proposed for rezoning, which is the 
sort of the L-shaped piece of the property within the planning area. And after meeting with the community, we got the impression that they wanted us to include the entire study area that we had established. So that was um, something that we gained from that public meeting. So back into the meat of this, as you can see, the existing community character policies we have in the area, we've got the community center policy that includes almost the, well, in, the entire intersection area to the south as well as up and down Nolensville Pike, and that's adjacent immediately to the property we're talking about here. We also have neighborhood evolving to the east and a good portion of com conservation policy there to the east as well that is along the Seven Mile Creek. Um, the intent of these two policy areas, um, the gist of it is that a neighborhood evolving policy, it's residential only, of course in neighborhood and mixed use neighborhood policy, which is the proposed, we have a mixture of uses. Um, the application that we look at whenever we're looking to whether or not um, this particular policy would be applicable in an area, we look at whether or not the area is zoned residential, commercial, or industrial, and whether or not the primary land uses are the same or that if it's envisioned to change to that. In this case, based on the existing land use map, you can see that we do have a mixture. We have a commercial building that is the subject of the rezoning case that you'll hear shortly. We have a multifamily residential behind it. We have single family, two family, and of course along the corridor, lots of commercial and office. The existing zoning pattern is similar. You see the CS along the corridor as well as the shopping center, or SCR, excuse me, zoning over the Walmart area and RM20 to the east and then R8 and RS10 to the east as well. Growth and preservation concept map, you can see that the area is part of the infill area, the, in, the infill um, policy or infill growth and preservation category, as well as being adjacent to the tier one center which goes up and down Noblesville Pike as well as encompassing the intersection with Harding. Existing transportation right now, as you can see, it's well served by arterials and collectors, um, with Nolensville Pike being a primary arterial and, of course, Harding to the south as well. Bus routes are shown here as well. We have bus routes up and down Nolensville, and they even make a little um, loop through Travis Drive here to connect to Nolensville. Um, back to the relationship to the so the policy that's in place now, as you can see, we have a jump from community center policy to neighborhood evolving. This proposal would make that um, transition a little less, a little more subtle going from mixed use to the community center. Um, when we go to the next stage here, the community meeting that we held, we had a meeting, as I mentioned earlier, on not November 9th, we had 16 attendees and unanimous support from the participants at that meeting for, for this proposal. Um, lastly, a summary, um, why is a mixed-use neighborhood appropriate? It would provide a transition from Nolensville to the neighborhood. It has convenient access to transportation system. It's consistent with the transition and infill of the growth and preservation concept map and its proximity to the tier one center as well as the community center policy next door. So staff recommends approval. Thank you. Now we're on to Lake Normal 13B. And then we'll hold the public hearing for both items and vote on them separately, so thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 13B. This is a request to rezone from SP zoning to MULA zoning. Staff recommendation is to approve if the associated plan amendment is approved, disapprove if the associated plan amendment is not approved. The site is located at 326 Welch Road, which is approximately one block east of the intersection of Nolensville Pike and Welch Road. Nearby uses include commercial and office located south and west of the site. Residential uses are located immediately east and north of the site. <coughs> the site is located in the specific plan residential zoning district. Nearby zoning districts include the shopping center regional, commercial service, and multifamily residential zoning districts. The site is located in the T3 Suburban Neighborhood Evolving Policy Area. The Associated Plan Amendment is for T4 Urban Mixed Use Neighborhood Policy, as mentioned in the previous presentation. The proposed Mixed Use Limited Alternative Zoning District is consistent with the proposed T4 Urban Mixed Use Neighborhood Policy. The site's location near a major arterial makes it an appropriate location for additional intensity to activate and support the nearby corridor. The proposal achieves goals of the proposed T4 urban mixed use policy at this location through supporting an existing commercial corridor along Nolesville Pike with a mix of uses and will potentially provide additional services for the adjacent neighborhood. Given the aforementioned staff recommendations to approve that the associated plan amendment is approved, disapprove if the associated plan amendment is not approved. 
Thank you. Very thorough. Appreciate it. We'll open this item for public hearing. The applicant, <coughs> come on up. Okay. Thanks for coming down. You have 10 minutes. You can reserve you. two of the 10 uh, for rebuttal. So Absolutely. Please state um, your name and address first. I'm thing. Craig Freiberg. Um, I'm one of the owners of the property. Um, just want to say, first of all, I'm a physician, so I don't know much about this. Um, but I'll say that the, the um, so I have my civil engineer over here. <laughs> um, I want to say that this project is actually meant to be a true affordable housing project. It's in an area that there hasn't been development in 30 years. When I said that in front of Councilman Elrod, he actually corrected me. He goes, it's not exactly correct. He goes, the only thing in the last 30 years has been the Walmart and no one else has wanted to come to this area. The community is very excited about it. And, and I think along, um, Mr. Stern was there as well. And I think he's supportive of the plan, meaning the project, but not the process. And along the way, I think that um, this is an interesting point here as far as the process goes, because the parcel that um, our team owns is 2.33 acres, I believe. And um, when staff looked at it, they thought that it should be 10 acres, not two. So I think that um, we're not trying to examine a, a smaller acreage. It's more of kind of the, the general area. Um, the purpose in MULA is simply that no one's developed here and we're in a, such a hot market, but in this particular area, it's, it's not the Nashville hot market that we know. And um, we need the flexibility, is the honest truth. And MULA gives us flexibility. The community was supportive of it simply because um, I think they like the idea of having other things besides just residential there with the XSP um, was, was limiting just to a, a, a residential component. That's it. Don't know much more to say. Thank you, sir. I'm uh, Michael Dewey with Dewey Engineering. <clears throat> I just uh, want to add this, uh, this has got an existing commercial building on a neighborhood evolving um, uh, policy area. So it seems to make sense from that standpoint to f for the policy change plan amendment uh, uh, in this case. We've also got T4CC to the north, e or north, west, and south with a uh, stream along the east side for which would make a, a good transitional um, transition between the policies. Um, you know, I think this is a good dis good discussion tonight. Um, Mr. Stern has mentioned to us. We've talked to him about our project. He came to our community meeting. He's not opposed to this project. He's just opposed to the um, process, as you guys have heard tonight. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of these uh, plan amendments don't, I think staff hears a lot of these plan amendments that don't even get to this uh, stage. I think the first step is contact staff for feasibility, um, which is where a, a lot of them are, are told that they're not feasible. And the next step is to, that staff, the executive director makes, an, it makes a determination. Uh, third is application is made, and then we coordinate with staff, and then we have a uh, community meeting. All of those items have been done, and we're here tonight for the public hearing. So uh, again, just um, want to reiterate that I would believe the opposition from our discussions with them to don't oppose this project, just the, just the uh, process. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And you'll have two minutes for a bow. Anyone wishing to speak in support? Seeing no, no one, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Mr. Stern. They've already testified for me, so I really don't uh, need to go too deeply into it. Um, it's my last time this evening to speak with you all, and I want to thank you for your conscious and conscientious discussion about community engagement. It's the thing that's kind of driven my life for about 30 years now. Um, appreciate the invitation to sit in on your meetings, and we'll, we'll do so. Just as background, I've been involved in, I was involved, uh, willingly or not, uh, with the creation of the general plan of Nashville uh, back in 19, late 80s, early 90s. 
I had a leadership role in all of the sub-area plans, one through 15, uh, while Jeff Browning was at the uh, head of this. Uh, and then I was able to uh, help him move and bring with Seed Tuck, uh, Mr. Bernhardt uh, into the planning realm. And it was, a, it was a wonderful bright light that kind of shone on us that day. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we want amendments driven by significant demands for change in an area, not you know, 0.28 acres or two acres here, but by significant demand for change. And only after figuring out a way of creating true community-driven planning staffed uh, uh, amendment processes. And I think we all share the goal of having ever-increasing quality, quality of community participation in both uh, decisions and in participation ongoing in their communities. So I thank you very much and uh, wish you a happy holidays. Thank you, sir. Happy holidays to you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, you want a rebuttal or you, I don't think you need to. Um, I, um, so seeing no one else wishing to speak, we'll declare the public hearing closed. And how about we go, Commissioner Moore? You wanna go first? I don't have any comments. No comments. Commissioner Gobble? I'm comfortable with staff's recommendation. Commissioner Sims? Um, First of all, I want to compliment the group for, a, this is a significant turnout for this community, and I don't know that the community could have ever driven this because they gave up a long time ago on trying to get anything in there and that we were doing something affordable and you're doing something that's really needed in a very appropriate area. Although I'm process-driven heavy, I think this is a good process. I think it's a good product way to go. Commissioner Tibbs. Commissioner Blackshaw. Commissioner Bichelle. I just have one question. One question? Um, That's good. I know. Uh, I'm tired. The, um, <laughs> the edge of it, uh, I, I just, this, I, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I just have a question. The, um, the, the, the part that's near the uh, creek, why was that not included? Because it's in that floodplain? In, in your in the area you drew out that you're you're redesignating, well, why did you leave that row out? We just leave out the conservation policy area so, since that's not up for change. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all. And just Councilman Elrod was correct. Uh, it was the Walmart. Um, I was the councilman who rezoned that particular property, and it was a good development. And and hopefully this will spur. Um, some some affordable housing, some some improvements in in the area. So I think it and, and that development actually is working out really well. So no, uh, it's good history. Thank you. Um, all right. So we need a motion. Um, I'll move uh, for item 13A approval. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. 13A is passed. Now we need a motion on 13B. Motion to item 13B. There's a proper motion second. and a second. Any discussion on 13B? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it and 13B is adopted. Thank you for coming down today. Now we're on to, we took care of 14A. So we are on... There's still, we still have quorum, so we're on item 27. I think, I think we have one more item that wants to defer. Which, which number one? Oh, oh, oh Lee, we have a new, we have an update from Lisa. Hi. So um, the applicant on item number 32 on page 13, 2018Z122PR001, um, would like to defer one meeting to the January 10th, and I think he can confirm for us. 
perhaps Is that John. <laughs> Do you want to confirm that you want to defer one yeah, name? There we go. There we go. Okay. Well, we'll we'll need a we'll need a motion to defer. As Lisa has said, the applicant wants to <coughs> defer, and he said yes. So we'll need a motion to defer item 32. I move to defer uh, item 32 that's, for one meeting. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. 32 is deferred one meeting. 27. All right, the next item is item 27. This is a request to rezone property from RS5 to RM20A, located at 706 26th Avenue North. Um, this is immediately north of Clifton Avenue, which is a collector. Um, and to provide some larger context orientation, um, you would have Interstate 40 just off the screen to the west, um, and Charlotte Avenue just off the screen to the south. Staff's recommendation is to disapprove as submitted and approve RM15A. Um, as you can see on the zoning map, this site is at the southern edge of a, a large area of RS5 zoning. Um, along Clifton Avenue, immediately um, adjacent to this site, you have industrial zoning. There's also commercial and mixed-use zoning along that corridor. Um, the Planning Commission has recently considered some rezonings to mixed-use and multifamily for various properties along Clifton um, and a few within this neighborhood. Those are still under consideration at Council, um, so your recommendations of approval have not been um, formally decided yet, which is why you don't see those reflected here. This particular site is in T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving Policy. Um, as you can see, it sits at the edge of that evolving policy area immediately adjacent to mixed-use corridor policy. Um, you also have some mixed-use neighborhood um, in the vicinity. The evolving policy in this um, location um, supports diversity of housing to provide choices for residents of the area um, and also to provide a transition between the more intense mixed-use development along the corridor to the heart of the residential neighborhood. Um, this particular site is somewhat constrained. Um, you have alleys running along um, two sides of the site, the southern and eastern edges. Um, it also only has 34 feet of frontage, where the average along this street is closer to 50 feet. Um, if, if it were rezoned to RM20A, um, there would be right-of-way dedication required along both of those alleys, um, along with landscape buffers to provide appropriate separation to the um, RS5 zoning to the north. Um, and given all of those requirements, as well as setbacks, it's unlikely that RM20A would yield an appropriate transition to the neighborhood in this location. Um, given that the goals of the policy are to provide that transition, and given how close it is to the corridor, some intensity may be appropriate, but staff had concerns that RM20A, um, given the site constraints, would be um, not the right fit. Um, however, RM15A would provide some opportunity to increase the diversity of housing types um, at an intensity that's more appropriate given the limited frontage and configuration of this parcel. Um, so absent additional parcels that could be redeveloped together, staff felt that RM15A was the most appropriate um, rezoning for this site given the policy, the location, and the context. Um, so for those reasons, we're recommending disapproval as submitted and approval of RM15A. Thank you. Uh, I declare the public hearing open and applicant has 10 minutes and you can use two minutes for rebuttal. Please give us your name and address. Thanks. Um, my name is Philip Pearson. I'm with Catalyst Design Group. I'm here to represent uh, Cottage Partners on this request. And as the staff noted, this, you know, this lot is adjacent to other lots at Front Clifton that um, will likely develop into a mixed use zoning as much of the property along Clifton has. Uh, and so it would seem appropriate there would be some transition to the neighborhood. We had requested the RM20A, but we're in agreement with the staff to, to reduce our request to RM, uh, RM15A. Um, the developer plans to build, would be allowed to build three homes. And he's looking at homes that are in the 1,500 square foot range for this, this slot with about two story, you know, two story houses. And so they're not on the high end of the, some of the other houses that have been in the neighborhood. Um, they would be intended for a uh, more economical uh, option to, to a purchaser. Um, 
we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, I may just wait and let's see what the... We'll save two minutes for... Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. Thanks for coming down and waiting. And you got two minutes, and um, state your name and, and address, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. My name is Tanya Wade Moody, and I live on 26th Avenue North. Been there over 20 years. And I have a neighborhood uh, community petition against what they're trying to do. We don't want our area rezoned. We don't want the tall skinnies in there because it don't fit. When you have homes at this level and you put one or two in like this, it doesn't look right. It don't fit. Everybody don't want to live in a two-story home over there. The homes that are there are one level. Three to five years from now, a lot of people who's living in these two and three storage homes, they're going to be looking for a one level home. Why? Medical reasons. Whether it's their hip, their foot, their ankle, they need whatever. Then they're going to be trying to find property somewhere to build a one level home. We don't want that over there. It's enough over there. They've taken that side of Clifton all over there and plus other streets over. That's enough. Put some affordable homes in our areas, something that people can afford. An average person who's making minimum wage can't even afford what they're putting over there. You got people who's trying to do good, who's trying to have a property or have a home of their own, but you can't, get, you can't afford it. It's too high. Where's the affordable homes? Now you, you kicking people out, you increasing the population of people living on the street. Why? Where, where's the help at for the people who's looking to try to survive in this world, who's trying to do good, who's trying to have something, who's trying to have something to pass on down to their family, to their children? Where's the affordable homes that's affordable for the average person? Not all of that high-end stuff. We can't afford that, and we don't want it in our area. And I wish y'all listened to us. We don't want it, and we don't need it. Can I present this to Absolutely. you all? Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Welcome. Hello, my name is Renee Dennis, and I live at 725 26th Avenue North. I'm opposed to the housing change as it is uh, just like Tanya. It doesn't fit into the neighborhood, nor does it give it gives the, the high school students or even the college students a chance to get out and to move and to look and to buy a home in that area. Uh, the teachers at the, at the high school, they can't afford a home in that area to even be closer to the school so they could be in the neighborhood with the students. They're <laughs> The housing that's there now is the displacing, and I have seen at least four to five neighbors displaced. And where do they go? They go to one of your other districts, and they're considered low income, and they're probably unwanted or can't even afford it. And some neighbors have even moved to out of state. But when you displace a family, whether they have children or not, that's gut-wrenching. And in that area, a lot of those homes, just like with Tanya, are homes that have been left from one family to the next. And when you come in an area and displace those people from their dream of, of just leaving their home to their family to maybe start to begin to build wealth, you're killing dreams. You're killing dreams. So when you come and allow these houses to be built that are half a million dollars in an area that was already been displaced by I-40, and so now you're just going to come and push everybody right on out there in a place where there's historic black colleges. And those students in those areas need to be in that area to see those people go to college to want to do it themselves and have a better life. So think about that. Um, look at um, Ruth Glass and Peter Marcuse. Study those two people because they talk about gentrification and displacement. And for Nashville to be growing the way it is, don't cause it to have stretch marks and scars. Don't do that. Because those scars, ladies know for stretch marks, when things go too much, they stay forever and for life. So think about what you're doing. And again, listen to us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Seeing none, two minute rebuttal. Thank you. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, this, this site is in the area that I think the R15 is more appropriate with the, the policy. <laughs> 
Uh, it does allow for some increased density and in optional housing, different types. Um, there has been, the, as um, Sean mentioned, the rezoning uh, that's gone through, we went through the second reading at council last week for the property across the street to RM20. Um, so this would be less than that. Um, the developer noted to me on, on, he built a very similar product on Hermes Street a year and a half ago, and while I can't speak to what these will sell for because I'm not him, uh, those sold for in the 279 range. And when he did some research, those four units that he sold on Herman were the only units, new home units in the area that were below 300,000. So we can debate on what's affordable and what's not. That's, that's different for every person. But the point is that they are on the bottom end of what's being offered in the, in the area. So we appreciate your consideration and we feel like this is an option to some of the more expensive houses that are built over in that area for, for somebody that is on a, a lower income budget. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare a public hearing close. How about um, Commissioner Bichel, you wanna go first? Um, was there a community meeting held about this? Do you know? Or should I ask the developer? That would be best addressed by the developer. There was not one um, led by the staff of the planning department as there's no plan amendment proposal associated. So we were just reviewing against the existing policy. Uh, before you sit down, where yep. he mentioned another, what? You want the applicant to answer? Well, wait, no, wait. Oh, no, okay. Um, he mentioned another property that was already zoned RM20 that's across the street. Can you tell me which one that is? So, um, the Planning Commission recently saw a rezoning proposal for these properties here along Clifton mm -hmm. and some parcels that extended into the neighborhood. Um, it was about four or five parcels. The, the rezoning was, was split, so there was a request for mixed-use zoning along Clifton and the multifamily RM20A zoning um, along 26th. Um, the staff recommendation in that case, um, we were looking at the fact that they had multiple parcels over which to, to make a transition and incorporate some different housing types as opposed to this single site with a pretty constructed strained layout, um, which is the difference in the staff recommendations between the two. And so just to clarify, it's um, the two little parcels, um, it's like uh, parcel 576 and 578, the two little parcels that face Clifton, not the ones that face 26. So these here where the, can you see yeah. the picture there? Are those mm -hmm. the ones you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. So those requested to go to, I believe, MULA. Okay. And then the um, parcels that turned in front 26th uh -huh. um, in this area or RM20 requested now? to go to RM20A. Now I'll say that the council has not finalized a decision on that uh -huh. proposal. And how many houses can they put on there then, each one? RM28. Well, that would be they would the, it would be based on the acreage of the site, uh -huh. um, or if they chose to develop them differently. I don't have those numbers in front of me okay. for the other proposal. Uh huh. Um, okay, let me ask. Um, did you have a community meeting for this? We did not have a community meeting for this one. There was a community meeting for the one across the street, which was a larger development. That uh, I know there was a large. Um, group there and I was not present, but I was told and had heard commissioners say and uh, that overwhelmingly people were for it on that one. That one had to be mixed use and you know possible restaurants and all of that. And so that was a different discussion than just one lot, but um, we, we did not have a community meeting for this single lot. Okay, um, do you know, was the um, council person in favor of your rezoning? I have not spoke to him, but my understanding from the developer was that he is. Um, okay, that's enough questions. Wait, wait, was the council person in favor of the other um, rezoning? So that one, those are still working their way through the council process. They have had a first reading, which was the introduction. Um, they have gone through public hearing, um, and they've passed public hearing and second reading. Um, they have not gone through third reading yet. I believe that's scheduled. Um, for Tuesday, mm -hmm. I guess likely. my thank um, you. Yeah, they, I guess my question. But he did make a motion to, on the second reading, so. But I can't speak for the council no. member, and it hasn't passed council yet. But did he time. come here and speak on behalf of that? I don't recall. Okay. I don't think he did. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Blackshear. 
Um, so um, the staff's recommendation is to disapprove as submitted, but approve RM 15A. And so with that, I know RM 20A would permit a max of four units. Um, RM 15A, did you say it would allow a maximum of three? On this site, it would allow a maximum of three. Um, there's also a difference in the height permitted um, between those two districts. Um, so RM20A allows up to 30 feet in the build two zone, um, so close to the street, um, whereas RM15A only allows 20. Um, and then RM, the, the requested RM20A would have allowed a height of 45 feet overall, whereas RM15A only allows 35 overall. Um, so that was also a factor in staff's recommendation, um, is that that was a lower scale that was more consistent with some of the existing development in the area. Um, so one of the neighbor's concerns were the tall skinnies, and I think we're all like aware of driving down a neighborhood and seeing the home, you know, like that poor home, because now they're being, um, you know, towered over by two additional <coughs> houses. And I guess, um, and, and I don't know what the proper um, process is for this, or uh, maybe the process was done fine, but thinking about community engagement and the neighbor's concerns about having two homes uh, tower over them, and then hearing now, well, RM15A would, would, I mean, I don't know if it would alleviate the neighbor's concerns, but certainly be better than RM20A, and, and maybe those kind of conversations could have be had with the community about what, if the community was amenable to um, a zone change, what that would look like, and what could be, I guess, more palatable to the community. So it just goes back to your point about um, there not really being a lot of engagement with the people who are already there and probably have been there for quite a while. Yeah, I think uh, probably two things. So the first is that staff also considers, um, there's the existing context as it's built, but there's also the context that would be permitted if folks chose to exercise their existing zoning allowances. And the, the RS5 zoning in this neighborhood um, actually allows um, three stories and 45 feet plus an exposed um, basement of seven. So if, some, if, a, if a current property owner wanted to redevelop their property as a single home, they could achieve a lot more height with no special consideration um, than is in place today. Now that doesn't mean that they will or that that's their preference, um, but we have to, you know, we keep in mind that factor as well well as the, um, what the, the existing context is. Um, and I would also say that we, when, you know, when there's no proposal to change the policy, um, we're sort of trusting that the, the Nashville Next process um, landed on the, the community's vision for the area and trying to review against that and hold true to what they've stated in that document. So, so sorry, can you repeat that? And thank you for letting me know about the high entitlements mm -hmm. for the current zoning. So what, what would be allowed currently as far as the height and what would be allowed under RM15A? Sure, so the, the current zoning um, in, on this site and in the neighborhood to the north is RS5. It is in the urban zoning overlay. Um, and so the height, the maximum height on the under the existing zoning would be three stories and 45 feet. There is an allowance for an exposed basement, which I believe is seven feet, so that would actually take you up to a maximum of 52. Um, in terms of the height um, of anyone choosing to redevelop under the existing zoning, the RM15A limits height in the build two zone, which would be within zero to 15 feet of the street, um, to 20 feet, so that's shorter. Um, and then once you do a 15 foot step back, um, you get a maximum height of 35 feet overall. So the, in terms of height, the RM15A that staff is recommending is actually more restrictive than the existing zoning on the property. Uh, I wanna ask one more thing. So I would be more inclined to approve of this if I knew that the other one had already passed council. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to defer this because if the other one passes, then this would be totally reasonable. If the other one doesn't pass, then this one would be sticking out. So I wonder if there is a appropriate way to defer. Director, would you like to answer that? Typically, we defer to see whether or not additional information can help inform our decisions. Um, I think that um, if you believe that the 
approval of the other development would make this a more context sensitive um, site, then that's appropriate. I don't think that we know what the council schedule is, and I, so I want to. So one one concern is that we're sort of weighing this on an outcome that hasn't happened yet. So I wonder if staff could give us some technical. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's as far as I know, there's not a council bill on this, so I think it can be deferred. Um, I mean, I would suggest that we evaluate this against the policy mm -hmm. rather than a, a, another zone change that's working its way through the process. But because as Sean stated, it, that other one was a little bit different. It included more parcels and had um, a mixed use element to it. So I'm not sure that that's the, what we should be weighing it against to make a determination on, on this property. But if there's other technical information you'd like us to look at, that, then I think that's appropriate. Commissioner Blackshaw, you have any other? No. no. Commissioner Sims? <laughs> Y'all could just record me. I just, you know, you just stick me because I'm going to say the same thing. Um, most cities our size actually have a community meeting as mandatory as part of the planning process, or I'm say most, many of our cities our size. I am concerned that there has not been a community meeting about this and that we have a petition up here signed by over 80 people who are opposed to it. So I do think deferral may be for us to get more information, but also for you to really meet with them, because I think sometimes neighborhoods are opposed simply because they don't know. And if you can talk with them, um, you can come to something that's more appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, and I'm gonna preach for just a second. I think sometimes we forget that development isn't all. Somebody's got to maintain the neighborhoods over the long haul. They've got to care for each other. They've got to grow their children there. So building it is just the first start of it. And somewhere along the way, we have to have our neighborhoods support in this. And I have yet to work with a neighborhood group, and I've worked with hundreds, that uh, aren't reasonable if you really sit with them. Commissioner uh, Gavin? <clears throat> well, first of all, I'd like to compliment the two ladies that spoke. Mm -hmm. I thought y'all did an outstanding job of making a good case. I am very torn on this one. It's a... I certainly agree with uh, RM15 uh, versus RM20, uh, but this is a weird little lot, and it may be more conducive to doing something there. Uh, that, but I kind of agree with Commissioner Sims and others that <clears throat> you know I'd like to see you get. A little bit more of a neighborhood consensus on this thing, because um, I think the tall skinnies have really hurt several neighborhoods, and uh, so it bothers me. I understand the staff's opinion. I understand how they did it, got there, but uh, so I'd like to see a deferral and see some some effort to kind of resolve this. So that's Commissioner Moore. I echo those sentiments. So. And you may have, I may have missed this. Um, what would be our appropriate timeline for a deferral for this? I mean, if, if, if the deferral is for a reason, you know, we feel like the community didn't have enough engagement and they, there's questions <coughs> about what the policy is and why we're recommending it, then probably a, to, to do, in order for them to get a community meeting together, probably a, a two two meeting. Two. And that would put it in January 24th. Is that the next yes. meeting date? Yes. Sorry. Oh, you're good. That's right. The yeah. yeah, January 24th. So you can make a motion. I will. I would like to move for a two-meeting deferral. It's a proper motion. And with the intent that the developer holds a community meeting. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> it's a proper motion. Second, any other discussion? Uh, we keep the public hearing open so we can see what came out of that. And we'll keep the public hearing open. We'll rehear it. Yeah. Anything else? Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the two meeting deferral, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Two meeting deferral. We are on to item 30. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Good evening. The next item on the agenda is item 30. It is a zone change request for 412 Brewer Drive. The request is to rezone from R6 and CL to MUL. The property is highlighted in red. It is on the corner of Nolansville Pike and Brewer Drive right here. Staff's recommendation is to disapprove. This site is a uh, split zone, so there's two zoning districts on it. CL portion is on the corner that's along Nolansville Pike and Brewer Drive. R6 is a one and two family residential zoning district and it's on the western half of the site. <coughs> Excuse me. There are three different policies on the site, so it also has split policies. Um, is T3 Suburban Mixed Use Corridor and T3 Suburban Neighborhood Maintenance with a little conservation policy on that border. The T3 Suburban Mixed Use Corridor policy is intended to enhance suburban mixed use corridors by encouraging a greater mix of higher density, residential, and mixed use development. The MUL zoning is not consistent with this policy. MULA zoning, the alternative zoning district, mixed use limited, may be supported at this location, but that's not the request in front of you tonight. <coughs> Over to the other side of the property, it's T3 neighborhood maintenance policy. This policy is intended to maintain the general character of the developed suburban neighborhood and does not support non-residential uses. MUL zoning would permit a range of higher density residential and commercial uses on this portion of the site, which is adjacent to an established residential neighborhood. MUL zoning would allow for development that would disrupt the existing character of the residential neighborhood and would permit uses that are not supported by this policy. Therefore, staff recommends disapproval. Thank you. We'll open this item for public hearing. Is the applicant in the room? Come on up. And uh, you'll have 10 minutes. State your name and address, and then you can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm actually here representing the potential purchaser of the property. Uh, the, the staff, of course, recommended disapproval. Uh, some of our arguments are the properties to the northeast, east, southeast, south, and southwest are all commercial zone, along with the west uh, properties as well. Uh, an MUL zone would be a compromise between the two different zones, R6 and CL. Uh, so that the property can be made a single zone. Uh, the way the property is currently divided between residential and commercial, the access for the commercial part has to cross over the residential part. If we were, if we were going to subdivide it, the commercial parcel would be landlocked and the residential parcel uh, would have to give access to the commercial lot. Changing the entire per parcel to residential would, would be inappropriate since you then have a residential parcel on a busy street corner surrounded by drive through restaurants and strip malls. Uh, the land use plan no longer currently reflects the nature of the area, so we would be permitted to change the uh, zone to something more appropriate. Also, the fact that uh, it is a single parcel with multiple zones makes it a hardship. Thank you, sir. We'll uh, make sure that you have two minutes for rebuttal if you want to do that. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support of the project? Come on up. Got two minutes. State your name and address. Appreciate you coming down and waiting with us for the last four hours. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, whether people want to believe it or not, your vision has moved Nashville to a positive <clears throat> direction. Probably from my accent, you probably think that if I told you I lived in this city for 40 years, you won't believe it. But I've lived in Nashville since 1978, <clears throat> and I've lived across the street on Ocala Drive. Every since I've lived in Nashville, 40 years, this site has been sitting there doing nothing. To me, it's if I had to describe it, it's a bipolar property. It has two identities. Now, I'm here both on professional level. I'm a real estate broker in Nashville for 25 years, and also on a personal level that I've lived in this town, seeing it grow, grow in a very good direction. 
When I lived in Nashville in 1978, it was only two of us from an international community. But now we lo look at us. We have multiple, you know, ethnicity living in Nashville. So it's a great thing for our town. So I've tried to sell this property as a broker many times. I've had children clinic looking at it. I've had major hamburger chain looking at it. I've had gas stations looking at it, and I've, I've had plenty of car lots looking at it. But as a member of this community, I have to see what's the best use for the product that we're selling. And I've always discouraged any car lot that called me, I said, no, this area doesn't need another car lot. When I got a hamburger change, they look at it, they said it's too small for just a hamburger, so they had to use all of it, but the zoning doesn't allow them to use it. So here we are again, we're selling it to someone that wants to do something great on that corner, and again, we have we have issues with the zoning. So I'm here to just, uh, thank you for any question. Appreciate thank it. You. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in, uh, in ma'am, you, uh, okay, there's two of y'all. Okay, we'll make a note of that. Thank you for letting us know. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? You know, come up, you got two minutes, and state your name and address, thank you. Uh, Ken Harding, and I own the property at 419 Brewer Drive, and my notes are in my cell phone that died. That's the bad news and the good news. The bad news is it died. The good news is we're gonna go home a little bit earlier. We're against rezoning the, these two properties on Brewer. I grew up in this neighborhood. We don't need it, we've been fighting it for years. Uh, that's the first time if he owns that property, we've never met him. Uh, he didn't speak at the, hear the hearing we had with the uh, vet. And the other brewer, a property we did not even have this coming up, we did not have a public meeting. We don't have anything against these people. We just don't want it in our neighborhood and we've told them and told them and the neighbors don't want it. And they'd like to be here, but it's you know hard sometimes. But thank you all for the time. Go home, enjoy your family and your dinner. My mom just got out of the hospital today, and I can't wait to see her. Thank you, God bless. Thank you for coming in. Anyone else wishing to speak? Come on up. Welcome. Evening, my name is Ray McCreary, and I represent the uh, folks at the uh, Brewer Drive Neighborhood Association. We've had uh, one meeting that I know of with the uh, fellow that wanted to buy that piece of property earlier on. I don't know if he's still interested in the property or not. One of the main objections of the neighborhood is that uh, we know that any kind of commercial development will inevitably drop more traffic onto Brewer Drive, which is, as you know, comprised mostly of single family dwellings, along with three schools that are a little further down. That's one of the main objections that we've got to the thing. Additionally, the commercial property that's next to it is a uh, child care center, which has been there for years. It's never been a problem. However, comma, I suspect that uh, the two properties put together would make a very large commercial enterprise property. Now, Ken uh, referenced some of our problems with the uh, attempted uh, rezoning across the street with the uh, bowling alley. The main objection that people in the neighborhood have, and I again reference the fact that I represent 136 uh, landowners over there, is that uh, it is creeping commercialization down Brewer Drive. And these are some small houses with large lots. You know, I say small, a couple thousand feet. Uh, with large lots, and it's begs that sort of a rezoning to put larger areas on there, such as has happened further down Nolensville. For that reason, and of course, the fact that your staff recommendation is to disapprove it, I'd ask you to disapprove it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Come on up. Welcome. Hi, my name is John Polizis. I live at 403 Larkway Court, 
And my property actually is right behind this, uh, the residential part of this lot. And I disapprove of this. Um, I don't want a commercial building behind my house. Um, it doesn't fit with a neighborhood. I understand that the small portion is commercial already. That's fine. But I believe that the residential part needs to stay residential. We're a neighborhood and we need to stay a neighborhood. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, two minute rebuttal, sir, for rebuttal or no? Doesn't want to do rebuttal. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Sims, you want to go first? Um, I have no questions. I think this is, I agree with the staff recommendation. Commissioner Gallo. So do I. Okay. Commissioner Bichelle. Can you tell me what you could put on there if it were M MULA? I had some written down on my notes and Lisa just found them for me. Thank you, Lisa. It could range um, from residential um, and commercial uses, such as um, multifamily residential, general office, medical office, um, restaurant, uh, different types of uses, um, uh, bars, cigarette, beer markets. It, it's a range of uses for MUL. But MULA restricts that? No, actually they're the same uses. MULA is the alternative zoning district. It has different standards for building form. And so within the policy, we would support an alternative standard having um, the locate glazing requirements, the location of the building. And so that may be supported this location, but the uses are the exact same. Commissioner Blackshear. Um, I'm gonna say one quick thing then I'm gonna make a motion. Um, the one thing that I think is helpful for us all to understand is um, our role as a commission. If something um, is inconsistent with policy, we are not allowed to vote to approve it. Um, and so we can maybe make some distinctions um, about why we think the policy um, is consistent. But if it's clearly inconsistent, meaning that you're having non-residential uses in a residential um, policy, then we're not actually able to approve it. So, um, and staff, correct me if I'm wrong. Well stated. Okay. <laughs> so I will go ahead and make a motion to approve staff's recommendation of disapproval. That's a, that's a proper motion. Is there a second? There's a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of disapproval say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And it's staff's recommendation of disapprovals. We are on our. Last item, item 35. Oops. Excuse me. Uh, All right, item number 35 is a zone change request for 414 Brewer Drive. Uh, commissioners, this will look pretty familiar to you. We are at the property directly west of the property we just discussed. So they are, um, the request is to rezone from R10, which is a one and two family residential district to MUL. Staff's recommendation is to disapprove. Zoning is R10, the surrounding zoning to the north, south, and west is R10, and then as we just discussed, there is a split zone property to the east, some CL um, and CS to the south and southeast. The policy is just one policy and it is T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance. The T3 neighborhood suburban, I'm sorry, the T3 neighborhood maintenance policy is intended to maintain the general character of developed suburban residential neighborhoods and does not support non-residential zoning districts. The MUL zoning would permit a range of higher density residential and commercial uses adjacent to an established residentially zoned neighborhood to the west. MUL zoning would allow for development that would disrupt the existing character of the residential neighborhood and would permit uses that are not supported by policy. Therefore, staff recommends disapproval. Thank you. We'll open this item up for public hearing. Uh, is the applicant in the room? There we go. It's Sorry, we, you, were, you were early. So you have 10 minutes. Um, you can reserve two minutes of the 10 for rebuttal. Thank you for coming. You can state your name and address. Uh, James Jordan, uh, and I'm here at the 414 Brewer Drive. I live at 25 Castlewood Court, but my wife and I own the property. Um, 
it's been a, uh, a daycare center for probably 35 years or so. Um, so we've been running as a business, commercial, as far as we bought it as a commercial property, been operating as such with the, um, the exception for the daycare. Um, and I can already understand the, um, these gentlemen's argument with the traffic and whatnot for the neighborhood. However, I would like to state that, and I guess I could save this for a rebuttal afterwards if they want to talk again, but um, with the daycare, we're being approved for, say, 60 children. You have between seven and nine in the morning and four and six in the evening, you have probably, oh, I'd say 30, 40 vehicles, at least maybe 50 or 60, depending on um, people's schedule that day, that traffic coming in and out of that daycare center. So I can't, if we were to develop it as a, say an office property or some small retail or multifamily or affordable housing or whatnot, I would think that the, there would be actually a reduction in the amount of traffic, at least particularly during those times, which was, so. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. And we'll make sure that we reserve uh, two minutes for, for your rebuttal, okay? Anyone here wishing to speak in support? Come on up. We, you can come again. We enjoyed your, your first speech. <laughs> well, once again, uh, I'm really confused. This piece of property has been there at least for 40 years that I've been in Nashville that just got disapproved. I mean, are we gonna make it a park? I mean. I mean, something that the neighbors can enjoy. I'm all for it, if we could. I recently saw across the street, behind the bowling alley to a dentist, which is about to revitalize that whole one acre across from their piece of property. So soon we will have a daycare in that look. I mean, a dentist in that location. So the area is moving in a positive direction. And, and I think, and I think it'd be a great you know, used for redeveloping it and have more, if we could do affordable housing, I certainly will listen to the staff for any other zoning that would allow to do something with this land and with their property instead of sitting there vacant for years and years or, or just be a daycare, which is not have any value to anyone but a daycare. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? What's his name and address? Uh, yeah, name and address. Sorry. It's Amir Roshan. I have two properties on Nolensville Road, 5114 Nolensville Road, and 5112 Nolensville Road. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> Ken Harding, 419 Brewer Drive owner, and even hungrier. Um, we don't have a problem with the daycare. We really, it's fine. You know, it's empty right now. We don't see a lot of cars come in and out that bothers us. But a, a tobacco beer store doesn't fit our neighborhood. So we're kind of against it. We like it as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Sorry, it's a little repetitive, but we have to follow our process. Thanks. State your name and address. Bray McCreary, 519 Brewer. Uh, again, we've talked this over with our organization, uh, the neighborhood organization, and uh, we don't have a problem with the longstanding daycare center there. The problem we have is a change that would allow anything. I mean, we discussed what it could become, and that has been uh, absolutely uh, opposed by our group. So again, and even based on your own staff recommendation, I'd ask you to disapprove the zoning change. Thanks. Thank you. My name is John Polizis. I live at 403 Larkway Court, which is directly behind this, this uh, parcel. Um, currently it's a daycare, but it is actually a house that looks like a house that fits in with the neighborhood. Um, with the zoning change, they could put anything there, which, you know, we're, we're opposed to that. We want to keep our neighborhood. Um, like I said, we, we don't, the, the daycare's been there as long as I've lived there. 
I don't have an issue with it. I'm, it, it is what it is. But changing it to commercial, I, I oppose that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? And uh, two minute, we're on two minutes seeing none, two minutes for rebuttal. I really don't have much to add other than um, we've, it's, like I said, it's been a daycare for many years and we really don't wanna continue to operate a daycare center there. We'd kinda like to open our options up to have other alternatives to, to develop the property, to do something else with it but we're kind of at your mercy at this time, so we appreciate your uh, 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 look, looking into this and your decision. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. We really do appreciate it. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Blackshear, you want to repeat maybe what you said last time? Yeah, I'll repeat it. Um, I do have one preliminary question. How is this being operated as a daycare? Within the zoning code in this um, residential zoning district, uh, daycares can operate with a special exception um, granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Good to know. Might open up my own daycare, will not. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> you're selling a daycare. <laughs> um, okay, so. If a policy is in place that is inconsistent with the requested zone change, we as a commission cannot approve the zone change. We can make distinctions as to why the policy is in fact consistent, but if it's clearly inconsistent because it allows non-residential uses in a residential policy, then we are unable to approve the requested zone change. So I can go ahead and make a motion. That would be proper, I think, everybody's <laughs> that. Yes, why don't you do that? Unless I, there's an objection. Okay, seeing none, go ahead. I move to approve staff's recommendation of disapproval. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of disapproval say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, ayes have it, and staff's recommendation is passed for a disapproval, and so, we are on to our very last things, commissioners. And everybody promises to be fast, mm -hmm. including Lucy, mm -hmm. including our director. <clears throat> but um, historic, Mr. Tibbs does not have a report, and Mr. Haynes does not have a report on, on parks. Um, executive committee report, we will, um, Jessica and I will be uh, working with the director bringing more workshops your way. And I think we agreed that the other, the next workshop is going to be um, visiting all the different divisions uh, within uh, the, the planning department. And we look forward to uh, doing that. So I think that's gonna be the next one. But if you have ideas, make sure you let the director know. And, and we're also gonna work on the community engagement some more. So there's gonna need to be more on that. Um, no legislative update. And lastly, the director's report. Okay, I'll be really fast. I have four, four fun things. Um, well, not they're not all fun. I have the first thing's a fun thing, the others are not. Um, so I want to uh, congratulate Peter Bird on our staff. He's in the T Division of Transportation. Walk Back Nashville held their annual rewards on Tuesday night, and he and Jason Rattinger over at Public Works were awarded the Government Officials of the Year Award for their great service. Um, they beat out one, two, three, four council members. I won't name them. Let's give them um, a But anyway. Give them a round of okay. Another, another a nice note. I think many of you learned at the meeting before last that Emily Lamb had moved on to a new post over at the codes department. And so um, we're pleased that another member of the great legal team under Susan is going to be joining us. And his name is Quan. And is there anything else you want to say about Quan other than that we'll be nice to him? I told him we were fun. We're funner than BZA for sure. Right. Yeah. So Quan is excited about uh, joining our team and also representing the planning commission. He uh, will be representing the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, the Planning Commission, and he's already prosecuting an environmental court. He comes to us from the city of Memphis 
um, as a public defender for three years and has now been with the Department of Law um, almost a year. Uh, he worked with our team before with historic zoning and then went over and represented the Department of Health. And in fact, that's where he was tonight. Um, and so I told him, you know, not knowing exactly when we were going to end, told him just to go ahead and come to the next meeting instead. So hopefully and preferably you'll get a chance to meet him at the next meeting. And he's looking forward to working with you all. I will still be working kind of in the background or as needed uh, to cover meetings and various other things. So I'm not too far away. But he will be here and getting started soon. And I also like to take a, a point of personal privilege, if I might recognize my son who has come in. Uh, if you would Ooh. please wave to everyone back there. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get to, to see me um, uh, in person doing work. It, a lot of times we'll see me on Channel 3, so I'm thankful that he's able to be here tonight to see uh, government in action. Welcome. <laughs> Next time you can testify on something. <laughs> Anything. Okay, just kidding. All right, uh, last two quickly. Um, many of you heard tonight from Stephanie McCullough, who um, we had not yet introduced. Um, she actually uh, has served previously in the planning department and then went and worked um, with the mayor's office as a, a person who is expert in public engagement. And so I was really excited by the opportunity to invite her back to the planning department because we, we have an interest in expanding our public engagement program. She worked throughout the city. Um, and so she brings a unique perspective. We're by no means finished, as y'all know from our last uh, workshop, with thinking about public engagement and how to staff that. But anyway, she's going to be a really vital um, contribution for us. I'm really excited. Last but not least, um, do you want me to say, or are you saying? You, you want me to say? No, you could say. Okay. Um, so uh, I just want to um, to let folks know that this is going to be the last meeting for Levi. Can you stand up and say hello? Levi, we're gonna... <laughs> He's moving to Arkansas, but we're not going to hold that against him. But we He's will miss you. He's moving to one of the great states oh, well, I in, forgot. in right the nation. Here. He is, well, for, first of all, I just want to say Levi has been an extraordinary member of the land development team. He's taken on some of the hardest projects, um, 8th and Edge Hill, um, Fairgrounds. I mean, with this group, everyone's like, really? But, you know, I mean, great, great contribution. And I have all really appreciated your um, sort of calm and demeanor and how you approach planning and very professional. Um, I hope you won't be mad at me for telling everyone that you're getting married. And so it seems that when you're married, sometimes you want to live in the same city, I guess. And so, um, right, Bob? So, so the idea. For the first year. <laughs> so, so anyway, he is good. We, we really wish him well. This is a good, I think it's a great opportunity for him. It's a good journey. I wish him well. You've got a bright future. Arkansas is very lucky to have you. So. How was that? That was pretty short. Okay. Sorry. That's all we have. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. So move. Uh, you guys, don't forget your points. Oh. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.